We are going to get ourselves started. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, without further ado, I will call this Saturday morning budget workshop to order. Thank you, thank you. Um, just a few housekeeping things for today's meeting. I just want to kind of describe how the meeting is going to function. Again, this is a workshop. Uh, we're here to do a number of things. First and foremost, uh, for counselors and folks in the audience, we're going to start uh, by looking at the community support section of the budget. Uh, for those following along, this is on page C8. Um, if you would like to turn to that and follow along, that's where we're going to get started. Um, we have a number of requests we're going to go through. After that, uh, it is typical uh, for the City Council to start at the revenue section of the budget and then we will move our way through all of the budgets uh, sections and kind of go essentially almost line by line discussing different parts and pieces. City Manager, you have a thought to add? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I suggest uh, yourself and the counselors go to C8. Um, you'll see there's some new requests that need to be acted upon and also on the ones that have been funded this fiscal year, you'll actually see what the request is mm -hmm. uh, for this fiscal year. Uh, historically, uh, as I prepare my budget, I just put in the amount that was funded by council the prior fiscal year. So uh, I just want to make sure you see what they actually requested as well as the new request you're on. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. Um, that'll be the case throughout this discussion today, too. There's always a page of just the numbers. Uh, there's also a page including uh, the past uh, year's budget, the actual that was spent, uh, this uh, proposed budget. And so make sure that we're looking at least for the starting uh, section on page C8, which shows the detailed description of the budget proposals and the requested amounts for these line items. So yes, after we go through the community support section, uh, we'll go through the budget starting at revenue, almost go line by line. Um, I'll request from counselors uh, that you ask your questions um, on the section that we're on. So we'll say again, we're, again, just for example, we're going to start on community support. Please ask your questions as we go through this. Uh, we're going to call up our community organizations that are uh, requesting support from us today, one at a time, just kind of go down the list. They'll have a chance to speak to their proposals. And then I ask that you ask them any questions, if you have any, in the time that they're up with us. All right? Another point. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to, for the folks in the audience, the, um, the community organizations, all the counselors did receive a copy of whatever you submitted. So they've all had it in advance. We were able to review it. So I uh, just want to make sure you were aware that everybody up here on the council and the mayor have a copy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and just like uh, as we go through these uh, and as you have questions, please, just like normal, raise your hand. I'll do my best to get to folks in order. Um, and then we'll kind of bring up our next uh, community organization, have them go. Um, again, because today is more workshop style, again, I'm looking for questions from you all, council members. Um, I also, at the end of each section, so again, say we get to the end of this, would love to hear from you any you know thoughts that you might be feeling towards the budget or towards these things, um, but save thoughts towards the end. Questions first, thoughts at the end. Um, I'm not going to be looking for amendments today. Uh, I would love for us to get to that in our normally scheduled council meetings and our special budget council meeting, which is coming up. Um, but today, I do think it's important if you do have specific things that you are mulling over, ideas that you would like to propose, that you say them aloud so it gives council members time to start thinking about things in advance of when we actually do make amendments and proposals and changes to the budget. Uh, it just gives folks a week or two to say, hey, I really do agree with that idea. Hey, I need to reach out to so-and-so to learn more about that idea. I have a question for the city manager. Maybe I'll shoot him an email. Um, again, it gives you time and gives us all time to make sure our questions are fully answered and vetted and ideas are all on the table. Obviously, I understand if you have an idea after today that it should, you know, if it arises, it's totally fine. I'm not saying all your ideas have to be the ones we discussed today, but I do think if you already have thoughts, it's important to get them on the table now, sooner rather than later. Um, 
But again, not looking for motions, not looking for amendments. Uh, let questions go first. Then at the very end of each section, if you have additional ideas or proposals, please make sure those are aired as well. Hopefully that's clear. Everything sound good to folks? Okay, cool. Great. All right. Well, without further ado, we will get started with our community organizations. So again, make sure you are on C8, page C8. Uh, first up, we have Coast Bus Service. Is there a representative from Coast Bus? Good to see you. And again, for folks coming up, make sure when you are up at the mic that the mic is on. There should be a little green button um, and that you state your name. And if you wouldn't mind repeating the organization you are here to advocate for, that would be great as well. Good morning. Uh, Rat Nichols uh, Coast. Uh, hopefully, but so hopefully you got a chance to review the materials we submitted. Um, we are uh, finally getting out from underneath the pandemic. We're seeing uh, great uh, growth in ridership. Uh, route 1, uh, which is your primary route here in uh, Summersworth, uh, through February, ridership was up 40% uh, year over year. Um, it was up again in March. I didn't grab that number before I came today, but it was strong again in March. Route 12, uh, which runs on New Hampshire 108, connecting Rochester, Summersworth, and Dover, was up 30% year to date through uh, February. And our ADA ridership, uh, this is service for individuals with disabilities who can't otherwise use the fixed route bus, is the highest it's ever been in Summersworth. It's up 25% over a record year last year uh, in, in the city. Um, our request this year is up significantly. Uh, that's a result of our changing landscape in terms of the funding that we have coming to coast. Uh, the one-time emergency relief uh, funding that we got under COVID is uh, ex expiring, being fully spent, uh, as well as other one-time, another one-time grant uh, federal grant that we received that paid for 80% of our operating expenses. Normally our operating expenses are covered about 55 to 60% from the federal government. Um, so that's why you see that increase. Uh, across the board, we were asking for a 25% increase from our municipalities uh, because of the way our funding formula works and the way that uh, we've been providing services in the, in the city and the way people have been uh, riding the services that we provide in the city, uh, the, the request in Summersworth is up significantly higher than 25%, more like double than that. So um, we uh, really appreciate the city's funding, um, always have, and uh, your funding is essential to, to us being able to maintain our services. Uh, the one thing that I, the last thing that I'll say is we tried to do a, a uh, assessment on what the impact of our request would be per residential household. Talked with Scott a little bit before. Uh, I had estimated around $45. He said that's probably a little high, um, but in the ballpark. So it gives a little bit of context to what our request means uh, for the average household in the, in the city. Thank you so much. So looking for any questions for our representative from Coast. Yes, Councillor Whitlam. Thank you, Rad. Thanks for being here. And uh, thanks for the, wor the work you do and, and all the staff at Coast. Uh, I think we have been a good partner over many, many years. Uh, but I'm not sure we've ever had a budget cycle or one of these Saturday morning meetings where uh, we haven't spoken about the difficulties of meeting the request. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's always a, a challenge. I noticed in your your request letter to us and to the city, you spoke about a $31,000 increase, about a 50% increase over the current year's request. Maybe factually accurate, but. Uh, no, it's a not actually. I did a math error there. It was, okay. It's more than $31,000. Our, our request last year was 118. Got it. Our request this year is 177. So clearly I got that math wrong. Okay. So that helps a little. However, um, when I look at what uh, is proposed, which matches what we spent last year, according to the city manager, that's 
nine, so let's say ninety-seven thousand. So when I look at the request of a hundred and seventy-seven thousand, we're looking at you know r roughly an eighty thousand dollar increase right. Uh, right. over what we budgeted to the request. So versus the description in your letter, which may be off by a few dollars, obviously, uh, of what last year's request were, was. Question for Scott or Bob. I know that in the recent two or three years here, we, we did meet the request in full one year, did we not? And I don't have that tracking in any of my materials. Yeah, I can or maybe check. maybe I do. But you did. You did. Yeah, two years ago, I'm pretty sure we did. Right. So, so we met the request, but now we're eighty thousand dollars in the hole that's just a lot in two years so uh, i'm not sure where i'm going to land uh, on this uh i suspect that personally i'd be amenable to conversations around some level of increase over last year's funding but to jump eight to eighty thousand dollars which is more than fifty percent is going to be a leap in what already is shaping up to be a difficult budget year i'm just being transparent I appreciate that, and I hope we can work towards closing that gap. Um, that's that's really critical to our being able to maintain service. One more question, if I may, and then Absolutely. I'll yield. Uh, when you talked about those one-time monies, uh, some of the, the COVID relief monies and, and those sorts of monies, did those support capital projects, or did they supplant the budget? Uh, no, those... those uh, those went wholly to the operating budget, which again, I, that's that I believe was a restriction of those funds when we received them. Got it. It's just it's, that's a, a shortcoming of one-time monies when you supplant your budget with them. Is that the minute they go away, you're that much more in the hole. So um, I know we deal with that sometimes with one-time grant monies uh, in the city. Uh, we choose to buy things, a capital project, a one-time thing versus the operating budget because it's just not a sustainable practice, and I can appreciate that. I'd, Maybe that's how they were targeted, but that's part of the dilemma that we have here. I don't disagree with you on that. I will say uh, when we received our CARES Act funding, so that was the first um, batch of emergency relief funding we did receive, that was absolutely critical in keeping our staff in place. Um, we did shut down for about a month and a half uh, between April and mid-May of 2020. Um, if we had not gotten those CARES Act funding, if we had not gotten those CARES Act funds, we would have had to uh, furlough our employees unpaid, and we would have lost them all. We would not, I would argue, we would not have started back up again, um, and that was not an acceptable result to me and I think to any of you. Um, we were very, very appreciative of those CARES Act funds, which saved us in that way. Other questions? Yes, Councillor Pepin. Yes, <clears throat> yes, Red. thank you. Um, I know this big number keeps getting bigger and bigger, and I know like every organization that's out there, you can only support, you can only do what your, your money is allowing you to do. I know you've, you've cut the route down in Somerset probably, what, three, four years ago, some of it, where you used to go down Indigo Hill Road and, and, and stuff like that. We did streamline. In, in you the, did streamline yeah. a, lot of your, a lot of the routes, which ended up de decreasing the mileage, so the, the figures went down in a roundabout way, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, they did go down in a roundabout way, but, but as a percentage of total service miles for the region, mm -hmm. your city's portion went up went up so i i guess my question is um i know we have a lot of elderly people that that utilize the system i know we have a lot of um uh housing people that use it the summits with housing authority uh, and i i do know that like you say uh, you're kind of like fixed that you have to pick up people that are handicapped and, and transport them within okay. a certain radius so you don't have any choice out of that when does it come to a point where you think we're going to have to discreet services in some of I know it's been done in the past with uh, uh, Greenland and, and stuff like that. Is is that in the near future? Uh, if we can make progress at closing that gap, um, then we can keep having conversations that avoid the discussion of reducing service. Um, it is something that 
as an organization, if we do not bring in the revenues we need, we will have to discuss organization wide. Um, we are pushing and, and we were very successful in pushing for a, a significant increase at the state level last budget cycle. We went from $400,000 a year statewide for public transit, which um, over the two year cycle, so coast portion of that was $34,000 a year funds about a day of our operation. Um, we we uh, got that up from 400,000 to 2.28 million over the two year cycle of the current um, state budget. Um, and so uh, that that was a what over five times increase. Um, and we're hoping that um, we can have success this next budget cycle to take some of the pressure off of our, our member communities who have been our best partners to date. Um, we want to slow down that pressure on the, our, our municipalities who've been great partners. Um, we are also doing a number, we are also about to launch a, a major gifts campaign uh, to try and raise funding, not only for our, our capital needs, our, our new building that we're trying to construct, but also to support our operations, both uh, an annual operating uh, fund as well as an endowment. Uh, to help set us up for the future. Thank you. Yep. Councillor Perdy, Ken Zara. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Um, sitting on the Coast Board as the representative from Summersworth this year, uh, as Marty did for so many years, I'm learning a lot about this. Um, and I think it's very um, similar, um, maybe at a different scale to our conversations around school funding and school budget. So, you know, the state isn't doing enough on either of those things. And so it puts the pressure back on the local communities. Um, what's really interesting to me though, is that transportation is so similar to infrastructure and other things in the capital portion and the um, operating expenses and public works. To me, it, it almost should be in a different category, but because of the reality in New Hampshire, it's your 501c3. And so we're talking about you coming to us with a request. Um, and I think transportation is so different because if we're looking at a percentage increase or decrease, it's not just a little bit of your services that you can or can't provide. It's tr for transportation to really work, there needs to be a tipping point of a certain level of service and frequency for people to be able to use it. Yes. Um, so I wonder if you could speak a little bit to um, the realities of Coast's um, federal obligations and state obligations um, in terms of um, not being able to just de decrease by a percentage if we decrease um, or if we don't meet your request by a certain percentage. Um, so I'll start off with, yes, we are absolutely the elephant in the room in the community uh, section. We are, we're, there's nobody like us. Um, and yet that is where we are in most city budgets. So uh, I'm used to being the elephant in the room. Um, in terms of uh, how our, our obligations to the federal government, the, the single largest area where our expenses uh, are increasing disproportionately is in, in services related uh, to individuals with disabilities. Uh, they're they're more, most often one-off trips, um, curb to curb. So these are these are um, you know helping somebody with a disability who can't make it to the that fixed route bus or can't negotiate the fixed route bus once they get on it um, to get to you know any of the purposes that they need to travel. And it's it's unrestricted in terms of trip purpose, but it it um, you know will pick up and drop off within three quarters of a mile of our bus route. Um, they're really expensive trips to provide. It's, it's uh, somewhere around 25% of our operating budget to provide those services. Um, the federal government, when they passed the ADA law, um, projected that it would probably be somewhere around 10% of our operating budget. Well, we haven't been at 10% in uh, well over a decade, probably closer to 20 years, quite honestly. Um, and these are services that by law we have to provide as a complement to the fixed route 
uh, bus services that we provide. We can, um, we can scale back our fixed route system to reduce our exposure to costs for those services, but quite honestly, these are folks who absolutely, this is oftentimes their one way to get around. And, um, you know, <laughs> probably the most rewarding thing you can do at Coast is provide one of those trips and listen to what that rider has to say about uh, the importance of that service to them. Um, so we do everything we can uh, not to, to reduce, uh, you know, that, that service. Um, there is a, there def most definitely is a tipping point in terms of whether or not our service remains um, usable. We are, we are, I would argue, pretty much bare bones. We offer a, co a coverage system uh, instead of a system that's designed around generating a lot of ridership. Our buses run every hour, which um, is pretty much the standard in New Hampshire. Um, except for maybe right in downtown Manchester. But um, when you think about that compared to a lot of other larger public transit systems that are running every, every 15 or seven minutes, um, it's not really comparable. Um, we, we have struggled with uh, staffing levels over the past few years, and you've seen us uh, run less frequently than every hour, and the system really doesn't work well at that point. Um, so our other options are to scale back our span of service over the course of the day, but then our service becomes less usable for people who need to get to work. Uh, and um, if we lose those riders, then, you know, again, we've, we've really um, jeopardized our, our um, viability. So. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, Councilor Gibson. Um, two questions, actually. Uh, first, um, most of your Medicare Advantage plans now offer ride reimbursement. Is that something that you could take advantage of in your system? Uh, no. Uh, we, well, the riders might take advantage of that un unbeknownst to us. Um, uh, so they, they may, they may, uh, they may do that. That is not something we're at all involved with. Uh, we did get involved for a short period of time in the Medicaid brokerage, uh, that the state set up. Uh, quite honestly, we got out of it because it just didn't make business sense. The reimbursement rates were, were horrendous. The expectations placed on us as a provider, um, you know, short term, same day were, were, um, not realistic, so we got out of that. Um, and second question was, when uh, UNH set up the Wildcat Transit, how much of an impact did that have on your ridership? Do you know that offhand? Well, so, so UNH Wildcat Transit, well, so way back in history, um, UNH started their caravan service uh, back in the 70s, well before Coast started. We started in 82 with service, founded in 81. Um, we, we, the university came under the Coast umbrella in 85 as um, we, were, we were asked to sort of uh, be an umbrella for public transit in this part of the state. We split in 90, Eight, I believe it was. I wasn't here at the time. Uh, and Coast ran the all the routes that were the sort of not touching Durham, and Wildcat Transit um, ran all the routes that uh, originate or or end in Durham. Um, there was there were certainly ripple effects on ridership at the time. What I can tell you is that there is not a lot of overlap between Coast and Wildcat ridership and hasn't been for uh, quite some time. We, we, uh, we just serve different, uh, different riders. Um, there's there's uh, the one place where we might have some overlap is if uh, folks are coming down from Rochester and then transferring onto Wildcats route to get into Durham, but 
There's, we see very little wildcat transit passes on, on board our buses, whether that be students or faculty and staff. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Thank you so much. Great. Appreciate Thank you, you very much. Yeah. And I'm, I'm always open to further questions. If anybody has any, reach out. I, Thank I you. do have one more sure. that Let's occurred to it. me. And only because I, I saw in the paper Dover <coughs> passed their budget, and I don't know why this is important. Did they fund at full request? Uh, that is my understanding going into that meeting that they were going to fund at full request. I have not verified that, but uh, that was my understanding. Thank you. Thank you again. All right. Uh, next up, we have Big Brothers Big Sisters um, with a proposed amount of uh, 1500 and a requested amount of 5000 Is there a representative from Big Brothers Big Sisters here today? A representative? All right. Any questions from the council or comments from the council before we jump to the next one? Okay. Next up, we have the Community Food Pantry at a proposed amount of 2500 and a requested amount of 3000 Thank you again, if you wouldn't mind stating your name uh, and the organization that you work for again, or represent. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Pat Patricia Vashon. I'm the executive director of the Community Food Pantry here in Summersworth. Thank you for being here. Are there any questions today from the council for this representative? Anything you'd like to say? I guess I should start with that. Uh, just questions. a couple comments. Um, we've we've really seen a huge increase, as you can imagine, based on the economy in the country, um, people's rent, people's food prices, fuel, et cetera. Um, so we've really gone up a lot. Food pantries that used to be two hours are now three, three and a half hours, just so we can take care of everybody. I have a tired staff, needless to say. Um, but we're doing our best. Um, our food prices have gone way up just like everybody else's. So I did ask for a, a slight increase from the town to help us. We still have a, a huge amount of people coming in from Summersworth, as you can see from the presentation I gave you. Um, we also are helping other towns. We're required to do that uh, because we receive USDA food from the government. So when you do that, there's some rules just like there are for everybody else. Um, recently, I learned that we only have to provide USDA food for people in Maine and New Hampshire because those are the two states that we receive it from. So I'm in the process, we, if you've noticed in your presentation, we have a large amount of people coming up from Massachusetts. We're in the process of eliminating those people from the food pantry, trying to do it gently with a letter and um, sending them a list of food pantries that they can access in their own area so that we can take those people off of our list because we are not required to serve them. It started as a small thing with um, some of the, they're al almost all immigrants, and I think it started with people who live here in Summersworth, and these are all relatives, and it just blossomed. They told their friends, and then it became a problem so that we have almost like 50 families coming up from there. So I'm in the process of eliminating that, so hopefully next year's statistics will look a little better, but I'm trying to do it gradually so I don't hurt anyone's feelings. So that's basically where we're at. We're spending a lot of money, we're doing our best, most of the time we have the shelves stocked. A few times during the year we're missing things, but we're doing the best we can. Thank you so much. Again, questions from the council? Yes, Councilor Witham. I don't know how you do what you do, but thank you for what you do. Um, <laughs> your request is a $500 increase. I certainly am not gonna stand in the way of that increase. That is... <laughs> We try to be fair, yeah. you know. I, More than fair. So. I, I, I try to raise money all year long, as you can see from all the donations that we receive. We spend a lot, of, a lot of time trying to raise money. As a matter of fact, I'm in the process of getting ready to send a letter out to all the businesses to see if they can give us some help, too. So. Other questions? Yes, Councilor Cameron. Thank you, Pat, for everything that you do. Um, you work out of my church in the fellowship hall, and I have been over there on occasion seeing exactly what you do and how many people you serve. I also um, can have a suggestion for you. I work at Walmart, and I can um, ask Richard Shepard to fill out another grant for you as well. That would help yeah. with your monetary costs. So, yes, again, thank us, you for everything you do. They did give us a grant, and another one would certainly be grateful. And appreciated. Thank you. 
other questions for today? All right, seeing none, thank you so much for being here. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, next up we have Haven with a proposed amount of 2,000 and a requested amount of 2,000. So a representative from Haven. Representative from Haven. All right, seeing none, we'll jump to our next one, which is Cornerstone VNA. It's a proposed amount of 5,000, requested amount of 5,000. Again, if you wouldn't mind saying your name and your organization. Yep, uh, Jennifer Ufkin from Cornerstone VNA. Um, everyone should have the letter. And we're just seeking um, the $5,000 to help with the uncompensated and undercompensated care that we provide. We do receive Medicare funding. Um, Medicare Advantage is growing in our area. Medicare Advantage is a struggle because it doesn't fully, in some of the contracts, cover the cost of care um, that it is provided for our specialty services to be able to give that service in the community. Summersworth is a growing population that we continue to serve. I would say it's number three in our uh, over 40 towns that we, we do service. So we do seek the town uh, for that additional support. Thank you. Thank Questions you. today from council? All right. Seeing if you that. ever get sick, oh, reach out that? to Cornerstone. If you ever get sick, just reach out to Cornerstone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank I you. Think you're all set. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Next up is Summersworth Youth Connection with a proposed amount of 5,000 re uh, requested NA. Do we have anyone from Summersworth Youth Connection? Seeing none, we'll jump to the next one. Community Action Partners, proposed amount of 4,000, requested amount of 5,000. Is there a representative can, from CAP? Can we back up to the someone's Oh, sure, connection? yeah, I should have um, given, I, you're right, I should have given you time to. No, it's okay. It, it's, My apologies. It, the 24-25 proposed is 50,000, the detail is NA. Is that, I, was there no, because this is a match, so just explain this, this for the public, I guess. Yeah, the, the council made a commitment that they would plug in 50,000. We had a, a special committee set up to meet with the school, work with the school on how funding would move forward in regards to revenue and how the city might partner in regards to any contribution. Going back many years, uh, maybe Scott remembers, maybe some of the councils remember, it was a, a de minimis amount of like 5,000 or something that we gave to the uh, someone with the Youth Connection, but in order to move forward and get them out of the grant cycles, which was hampering their uh, programmability, they stopped applying for grants and needed more funding to stay solvent and to keep their programs moving forward. So the city um, the council set up a special committee, the mayor did, and we worked with the school and came up with a funding mechanism in regards to what people would pay in revenue and what the city would pay. And uh, they did, n did do not need to come back and ask for this amount. This, the, the council was committed to this amount for every year so long as the program remained active would be my uh, uh, humble comments. Yeah just, the yeah, just to follow up here. So I know that in looking at the school department's budget that they submitted to the city manager, a tax cap compliant budget, which they were required to do under the charter, the Summersworth Youth Connection is not funded. It's one of their tiered reductions, if you will. Uh, if the council has an appetite to override the tax cap to uh, allow the school department to fund SYC, uh, then this number would make sense according to the agreement but if that doesn't happen then this 50,000 basically is not needed anymore so um, which I suppose that 50,000 could then be reallocated to other things uh, in, in the budget um, <coughs> just stating the facts here right um, and I'll offer up this opinion, although thank you, City Manager, for the explanation of how this sort of bifurcated funding uh, occurred. Um, I think it's complicated and quite frankly, squirrely. <laughs> uh, and I, I think as we move forward out of the budget and as we get settled in uh, with a new operating budget that uh, it would make sense maybe through Finance Committee to look at is this the best way to fund SYC if it remains funded? Because I think it belongs in one cost center or another and not like spread out like it is. Because right now, it's like spread out three ways. It's spread out between the school department, the city, and then the users. 
um, and that's complicated. So uh, I think I'd look to clean that up. Can't do it now, but this just speaks to the issue. Thank you. Other questions about SYC? Yes, Councilor Perry Cotton Zero. Yeah, I had a uh, similar question about um, depending on what happens with the school portion of the budget, um, if SYC, if the allocated budget for SYC is funded, I've heard some talking about um, the YMCA coming in or um, just wondering if there were, if that portion of the budget was reallocated to bring in another service would this line item from the city budget still be allocated towards that new thing or if it changed from Summersworth Youth Connection to anything else would that come back to us to to make a additional decision is there anyone who's comfortable answering I unfortunately for clarity and uh, just transparency's sake probably should not be answering or talking about SYC as uh, my husband is the program director as well actually he is the former program director as of Friday uh, <laughs> however is still being um, funded a small amount to do five hours a week for the program for the remainder of the year so I unfortunately should not be answering or talking much about this but is there anyone who knows better who could I'm not sure I understood the question, but um, can this 50000 be allocated to another similar program or something that might be, um, might grab some of the programming that was funded through SYC? It'd be up to the council. They can certainly do that prior to p passing the budget. Allocate that to it, uh, reach out to, well, allocate it to its, some broad scheme and ask uh, the city manager to, to come back with some sort of proposal after contacting. Uh, YMCA, I think you said, or, or something of that nature. Yeah, I think um, just to clarify the question, it was I understand that the city council in the past wanted to, in perpetuity, commit to fifty thousand for Summersworth Youth Connection specifically, but I don't know that that commitment would apply if it were outsourced. So I'm just wondering if the council would have the opportunity to uh, approve. Would you have to come back to the council to approve to reallocate this? if it was not Summersworth Youth Connection specifically? Yeah, it would have to come back to the council to reallocate. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions, Councilor Whitham? Yeah, I, I think Councilor Perry Catanzaro raises a great question. And I don't need an answer from today, today from city staff, but as we look to potentially amend the budget, uh, this particular line, instead of calling it out as Summersworth Youth Connection specifically, maybe it's uh, more generalized youth, youth support activities or uh, things of that nature so that then uh, there's a line item that we can then take action via resolution to fund SYC or YMCA or XYZ or whatever it might be. I think just to generalize that cost center so that we have flexibility. I'm seeing some nodding heads, so I might be looking to make that amendment when the budget is prepared for that. Thank you. Okay. Other questions or comments about SYC from councilors? Okay, seeing none, we will jump to uh, community action partners, or excuse me, community action program uh, with a proposed amount of 4,000, a requested amount of 5,000. Thank you, if you wouldn't mind saying your name and your organization. Good morning, my name is Sophie Aiken, and I'm from Community Action Partnership of Stafford County. Um, we are um, respectfully requesting $5,000 from the city of Summersworth. Last year, we gave out $2.9 million in assistance to over 1,800 Summersworth residents. Thank you. Are there any questions from council? Yes, Councilor Witham. I think in the past, it's been explained to me that the work of community action can help with our cost center on uh, welfare. So could you just speak to that and how that works or I don't know, maybe Scott or Bob? Hon honestly, I can't answer that question. I'm happy to get the answer to that question for you. you know your welfare? Yeah, they, they've been very helpful with uh, our uh, public assistance and w they have a lot of other programs that we don't necessarily assist with, but we can refer them to. So um, our welfare office works very close with them in providing support to certain residents. We have several programs, fuel assistance, electric assistance. We have food pantries. We have senior transportation. We have Head Start. We have numerous programs. 
point is this helps people uh, that need assistance in another way beyond our, our social, our welfare office, our human services office. Um, just speaking out loud, I think the $1,000 increase is, uh, is very doable and financially makes sense. Uh, the 1000 here saves us 10000 over there or some math like that. Absolutely. So. Other questions or comments? Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Your fuel assistance program, is that connected with the state? Um, it, it, there, we follow government guidelines. We also have a gift of warmth program that is outside of the federal program that will help people that may be a dollar over the level of qualification. Right. Um, and that's <coughs> privately funded. Thank you. Other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. All right. Next up, we have the Festival Association with a proposed amount of 5,000, requested amount of 5,000. If you wouldn't mind saying your name and your organization, thank you. Good morning, my name is Donald Hood. I'm the president of the Summersworth Festival Association. And uh, for those who don't know, uh, I am really the guy that brings the fun to the city of Summersworth. Uh, we have a, a series of programs set up to uh it's there we, we we're doing this for the children of the city of summersworth that's our mission uh we started already this year we have had uh, breakfast with frosty in february that was very successful uh, we're going to have in june the uh, uh celebration night which has uh, a extraordinary fireworks program uh, then uh, the next day we have our children's festival that uh, operates on uh, Main Street and up at the Pines uh, two different locations uh, then in July we're gonna have a series of kids concerts which last year was overwhelmingly uh, uh, attended we had uh, upwards of 200 uh, uh, family uh, members uh, children and their parents at each event uh, and then uh, in October we have our uh, my favorite the pumpkin festival a great day of fun for uh, parents and their families and we always say if the parents don't go home tired after that day well they haven't done their due diligence with their kids and uh, also, as part of this uh, SFA, we do fundraisers during the year, which uh, while we're making money, it brings a good time to adults that like craft fairs. Uh, we have a, um, uh, what's the other? Oh, the penny sale. The penny sale, if you haven't been to the penny sale, you're missing out. And uh, so all of these events, and we do this uh, to raise money for uh, our uh, children of Summersworth. We have uh, arts grants that we're uh, reinstating this year. And uh, also we wanna thank the city of Summersworth uh, for helping us. We couldn't do the things that we do without the help of the city of Summersworth. We use the schools, the city, uh, trucks the, the public works helps us uh, and uh, uh, the police and so on and so forth and uh, that's it thank you so much uh questions from council yes Councilor Witham. happy to continue to support the festival association does a lot of good work and just an idea i think you could do uh, another breakfast with frosty in april if you look at <laughs> yeah <all right>. <laughs> surprise <laughs> other questions from council all right, seeing none, thank, thank you, you so much. All right, next up we have Crossroads House with a proposed amount of 1,000 and requested amount of 64,000. Anyone from Crossroads House here? Crossroads House. All right, comments or questions from council before we move on? Yes, Councilor Parity Count Zero. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, obviously that's a very big increase in requests, but I appreciated the numbers here. Um, 
we've talked a lot about uh, the Willand Center and where people are from. So it's very interesting that Crossroads from Portsmouth um, served 37 summers worth residents this past year for a total of 2,393 bed nights, which adds up to a cost of $258,444. So they're requesting 25% of that from us. Um, that's certainly above anything that we have ever funded under this category, but I think to keep that in mind as we think about both whatever we will allocate to Crossroads House this year and thinking about our own shelter and knowing that we are not just serving people from other communities, that other communities are also serving people from Summersworth. It's just an um, interesting part of the discussion. Thanks. Councilor Benson. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a point of clarification. Didn't Crossroads run that uh, warming center last year? No. Our well and warming center? Yeah. No, it was Who was the SOS, company? Just SOS recovery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Councilor Rhythm? I think Councilor Parity Carrot Zero makes a good point. This, this speaks to the issue of, of the folks in our region that are unhoused. Um, we have Crossroads House request here. Uh, we know we're going to have funding requests for uh, whatever the local warming center shelter, it, we don't know what that is yet, but it strikes me in a similar conversation that what we just had with SYC that maybe there's a more of a generic unhoused homeless line item bucket that then we can through resolution allocate to sources that we see fit as a council. I'm, not quite sure if I'm articulating that well, but that's where my mind is sort of at, sort of pinning us down with one thing. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Councilor Gibson. Um, I could go with a small increase over the proposed amount, but at the same time, um, we're servicing people out of Portsmouth in the warming center. And we are unable to request funds from those that community or any other community to cover the cost of providing that service to them. So I would be leery of even considering fully funding their request. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Yes, City Manager. Yeah, just to the point of uh, allocating some money into a broader category, uh, we do have ten thousand uh, dollars that we've carried for a few years, a couple of years now, anyways, for homeless shelter support under the uh, uh, welfare or human services budget. And certainly, when we get to that, we can talk about whether the council wants to uh, start to consider more. We had to pay fifteen thousand for the shelter this year, so you, you may want to consider some sort of increase when you get to that particular component of the budget. Thank you. Questions, comments before we move on? All right, thanks. All right, next up we have AIDS response with a proposed amount of 500, requested amount of 500. Is there anyone here to represent AIDS response? Questions or comments from council since I'm not seeing a representative? All right, thank you. That will move us to Stratford Meals on Wheels with a proposed amount of 2,500 and a requested amount of 3,000. Anyone from Stratford uh, Meals on Wheels? I don't see none. Questions from Council? Councilor Vincent. Thanks again, Your Honor. <clears throat> so Meals on Wheels um, is a really, really good program. Um, it's not, and I say this every, every year, <clears throat> I think for the last six now, it's not just food. It's a person going to their home and having some conversation with them. You know, um, I would say that most of the people that receive Meals on Wheels probably are elderly. Um, and let's face it, when you get elderly and older, you start losing friends. And then who do you talk to? So it's not just food. It's the main source. I get it. It's very important. But it's also... Um, conversation and um, having somebody come to your house and <clears throat> I just like to always say that kind of gives a different perspective thank you thank you 
Other questions or comments? From counselors? Seeing none. We will move on to the Lions Club with the request, or excuse me, a proposed amount of 2,500, requested amount of 5,000. Anyone from the Lions Club? Thank you. Again, state your name and organization, please. Good morning. I'm Peter Hood from the Summers of Lions Club. Um, I'm not going to reiterate the uh, the thing. Uh, uh, a lot of questions we get, though, through here is like, with this winter, how did things go? Um, we still had a very successful skating season. Um, You'd like to skate 60 days out of 60 days, but that didn't happen this year. Um, typically, we can skate from the first day in January to the first day in March. Um, but we did skate 25 days this year. Um, we usually do night skating on like Fridays and Saturdays. This year, it was like whatever day of the week we had ice, we turned on the lights and we stayed there till 9 or 10 o'clock. The high school kids really enjoyed that. Um, we also hosted the uh, SYC program one afternoon. They came down with their bus, and um, we did uh, the free call them skate rentals, but it's free. Um, and we also continue to do the vision screenings at the elementary schools. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of other stuff we do beyond ice skating and the, the skating rink, but the money that, that um, we ask for does go to help maintain that property. Um, so that's why I try and mention that, but we do a lot of other things too. Great, thank you. Questions, comments from council? Councilor Witham. Thank you for what you're doing. Thanks for the explanation of the season because I had that question. So, uh, and you're right. You are out there on the oddest of times. I get it now, right? So, uh, appreciate that. Um, being well familiar with youth athletics, the youth programs, and, and you think baseball, you have T ball, you have little league, you have baby, <coughs> ultimately finds its way to your high school players. Those, those are the feeder programs. Uh, for Summersworth High, it's a combined high school hockey team with Poe Brown. Uh, there is no youth hockey program here in Summersworth, so if a child in Summersworth wants to play youth hockey to get ready for high school, their options in the past were to go to Dover or Rochester, I would assume. And although the, the Lions program is not quite what that is, it is uh, a, a bit of uh, help for that child looking to move their game to the next level, I suppose. Yeah, it's definitely a starting point for somebody that maybe has not been exposed to hockey or it's, um, you know, it's, it's a low cost. It's, uh, we charge $75. Um, and as part of that $75, it, we uh, outfit them head to toe with hockey equipment. We did, uh, I think, 48 kids this year that came out two nights a week. Um, with the weather the way it was, we actually um, sought donations from local business owners and they <coughs> sponsored us to rent ice on, we, we got a time slot on Sunday afternoons at Rochester. And then we still skated, I think, seven or eight times um, on our own pond. But to, to give them a given day and time and, and something that was reliable, we did rent ice. And, um, but yes, this is a low cost way for them to get exposed. We also have older kids that continue to do our program. And this one kid, um, it stays with me that he, you know, he was a good kid, but probably not a great hockey player. And I'm just like, what is, you know, and he comes over and he's coach, this is the most fun I've ever had in my entire life, you know? And so I was like, all right, you know, so we're not trying to make NHL stars. We're trying to, for me, it's to keep the kids off the, the video games and get them outdoors doing stuff. Um, but at the lower level, you know, when you have your six to eight year olds, we do try and push them like, hey, you've seen hockey, mom and dad, you like hockey, do you want to now move to the next thing? And then it does hopefully seed into high school levels. But, yeah. Thanks. Other questions, comments? Councillor Vincent, I'm sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Pete, if, um, would the Lions Club be interested in if the city, and obviously it would have to be voted on by the council, if the city didn't give you a cash amount and I know you're requesting five thousand. I know that there's been a long time need for water down there. So to build a, a bathroom facility. <clears throat> Is that something that they're still interested in? I, I think uh long term probably we would entertain that discussion but to to um water comes with a whole slew of other things like what do you do with it when it comes in it's got to go out and so then it's like it's, uh, I only mention it because I know it's talked about a previous meeting, yeah so. no I think uh, probably in some sort of long-term plan but not in the short term yeah thanks 
Thank you, Councillor Perry, Count Zero. Uh, yeah, thank you for um, a lot of fun times on that ice. Um, I, I just wanted to say I think it's very cool that Summer's Worth has a free skating pond that you can go to if you have your own ice skates or renting ice skates. Um, you know, obviously in Portsmouth you have to pay to use that one that they build um, in downtown Portsmouth. And I think this provides a lot of really fun recreation and gets some of us older people away from screens as well. So thanks. <laughs> Other questions and comments? All right. One other that. unique thing about our pond, while we're on it, you kind of remember, it's like we are, I believe, one of the only places in the area where you can anytime bring stick and puck. And that's a lot of the draws. And it's, so it's not just a hockey pond. We have a lot of other people skating. But it's a lot of other places. It's like oh, 9 to 10, stick and puck. Everything else is just a public skate. And so this we do attract you know, a lot of um, families that want to play hockey and then uh, there's also we make sure there's always space for it's not just hockey it's it's all kinds of skating thank you so much all right thanks all right uh, next up we have sober sisters at a proposed amount of 2500 requested amount of 5000 and if you wouldn't mind saying your name and your organization Good morning. I'm Monet Cassier, the Executive Director at Sober Sisters Recovery at Maui Farm. Anything you'd like to share with us? Well, I'm sure you saw my letter. Um, we run on private donation and the rent that the women pay. And we have since we obtained the building eight years ago on February 2nd. When we got the building, it was uninhabitable. The windows were kicked out, the radiators were in the yard, the oil tanks had holes, and we weren't allowed in until we signed the lease. So <clears throat> most of you already know the list of repairs we've done. We've raised about 400000 to date um, and put it into Maui Farm. Um, so this past year, as the letter states, um, New Hampshire Charitable Association, uh, there was an anonymous donation, and Chinberg, we put in the fire escape, brand new, gorgeous fire escape. Some of you may have came to our uh, attended our, our celebration. So I have a painter contractor scheduled uh, to finish the cedar siding repair, paint, paint the fire escape, and then do some repairs on the front of the house. And then the whole exterior will be done. As we've been raising money and doing each side, um, you know, in the middle of COVID, the waste pipes blew behind the wall as the house was full. So with the money, my cushion, that I do not like to touch, but we replaced all the cast iron from attic to basement. You know, we survived, we made it through that, still servicing women um, in a masterly fashion. Uh, we have a huge success rate because of the level of structure um, and a lot of support actually from my personal family. Um, and the funds that we've raised through, uh, as I said, private donation. We, because we are not harm reduction, uh, we are holistic. Um, we do not have narcotics or controlled substances on site. Our, our model is holistic in that the women work full time. Uh, they can go to the meeting of their choice or their recovery. It could be yoga. It could be 12 step. It could be, uh, it could be church. Uh, so we're shifting a bit to be more inclusive. Uh, so I'm going to mention right now that we have voted internally that we would like to change the name to Mally Farm for Women from Sober Sisters Recovery. And the reason for that is announcing that all the women that live there are sober is breaking their anonymity, although we are a totally abstinent building. There are random urine screening and upon moving in. Uh, and also, having the sign state that the ha farm is full of women on the end of a dirt road. We've had some things take place, so we'd like to shift the name to be Maui Farm for Women. Just wanted to mention that. Uh, and then also, on our lease, it states, purpose of housing for women recovering from addiction. And we would like to change that to substance use disorder uh, and healing from trauma because that's what we've been doing for eight years. And the, the wording is more friendly, kindly, and more inclusive as opposed to exclusive. But, okay, 
getting back to my request. We'd like to get the rest of the side of the, the building done, those repairs. And I know you, you all know that I'm on a mission and there's many more projects to come up, but our goal is to restore the farm and the property back to its original state. It's going quite well. So we would appreciate help and for you to come visit this year at our celebration. Thank you so much. Question from council? Yeah, Councilor Cody Catanzaro, 10 seconds. Yes, thank you, hi Monet. Good morning. Um, I just wanna thank you for everything that you do there. I've, I've been there and spent some time there and um, I just think the program is incredible and I've been so personally inspired by all the work that you do there. Um, do you have a date for the celebration yet this year? Eight, eight. Great. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see mm -hmm. you. Uh, Councilor Beckman. Yeah, I, I'd just like to thank you for all, all you've done, uh, what you've done to the building, and also what's more important is what you're doing to the ladies. Um, it is, um, I, I went up there for your open house and stuff like that, and uh, it is so gratifying to see progress like what you, you give to the people. Uh, and uh, my hat's off to you. As far as the changes, I have no problem with the changes as far as, as it goes on, wherever way it needs to go through, through the city council or, or through the city manager's office or whatever. Um, it's something that grows. It's something that needs to be grown. And I commend you for all the work that you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from council? Oh, thank you. Yes, Council Mishu. Thank you very much for everything you do over there. <laughs> we have a lot of conversations when I'm down there. Mm -hmm. I appreciate everything. And I also want to let the members of this community know, not only she takes care of the Mally Farm and her sober sister unit, on occasion when she has a chance, she comes over and takes care of the community gardens as far as mowing the lawn around the property and all that, mm -hmm. which helps out public work. So they don't have to get stuck doing it. So I personally want to thank you for everything you do over there, down there. Thank the you. Facility also at community gardens she also watches over the property so she notices that when the light comes on at night <laughs> yeah. she's like who's over there yeah. so she's yeah. pretty good to have so thank you for everything you're welcome thank you other questions or comments from council all right seeing none thank you so much thank you all right next up we have new requests, uh, so there's no proposed amount in the budget, but there is a requested amount for each of these. Our first up for a new request is CASA with a requested amount of 500. Is there a representative from CASA? Again, thank you so much. And if you wouldn't mind just stating your name and organization. Good morning. My name is Beth Newkirk. I am a volunteer advocate with CASA of New Hampshire, working in the Stratford County area. Anything you'd like to share with us today? Um, although we're a statewide organization, there is a great need in Stratford County, in, Ro in Summersworth in particular, the numbers I've been given are 28 children in 21 families currently being served by CASA. We are advocates appointed by the court to look at the best interest of the child who has whose parents have been determined to have abused or neglected them. So these are some of your most vulnerable population of children. Um, and, and I could go on and on. I've been doing this for about 16 years advocating, so I have uh, spent quite a bit of time in this area, but I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Great. Thank you so, so much. Any questions from council? Yes, Councilor Witham. Uh, question for city staff. Did seems to me we once funded CASA. Did that go away? No, we have funded them in the past. It's it, For whatever reason, I'm not sure, it's been kind of hit or miss. So uh, we will fund them to the $500, and then for whatever reason, we don't get a request. And I don't know if it's changeover or what happens, but so the answer is yes, we have funded them in the past. Thank you. Other questions from counselors? Yes, Councilor Cardi Catanzaro. Hi, thanks for coming today. Um, could you give an example of the type of advocacy that you do for a family like a family that would be in Summersworth or, or a child in Summersworth? Okay, my focus would be on the child. So primarily we visit the child 
every month to provide a consistent presence for these kids whose lives are being upended through this court case. I also talk and gather information from anyone, family, friends, school service agencies, who is uh, willing to talk to me about the situation for the child. I write a report for every court hearing, which is submitted to the judge. Um, and speak at court on the best interest. We're looking for stability and permanency of safe housing and a, a safe and good life for these kids. Thank you. Other questions or comments from counselors? All right, thank you. For transparency's sake, I should also say that my family benefits from CASA. I'm a foster parent and uh, mm -hmm. my child has a CASA representative and the work that you do is phenomenally important to his life. Uh, so thank you, really, thank you so, so much. But um, not that I'm receiving any financial <laughs> benefit from this, but I did just think it's important to say and to have the opportunity to say thank you, so. Well, thank you, thank you for your consideration today. Thanks so much. All right, next up under new requests, we have ShareFund with a requested amount of 4,000. Is there a representative from ShareFund? Thanks again. If you could state your name and organization, please. Hi, my name is Deirdre Watson. This is my uh, second year I presented last year, but we have some new council members this year. Um, so everybody has the letter that Skip, um, our director, sent. And in the audience, I have Jerry Rainville, who is the uh, president of our board. So if there's any more general questions about the share fund, I work or I volunteer with the financial aid program at the share fund. I previously was with the Summersworth Share Fund. And during COVID and the lockdown, our, we just, it was, became impossible to keep it going. Very few volunteers, and um, it was hard to manage. So we merged with the Rochester Share Fund, and they changed their name. They got rid of Rochester on the name and became just the Share Fund. So we work with families from Summers with Wallingsburg North to Wakefield, Milton, Farmington, and Rochester. Um, I know the uh, agency does rec go to the various towns for some assistance. Um, I, in the financial aid program, we work just like with CAP and the, and the presentation uh, regarding the city welfare offices. I work with all the, vo the local uh, welfare offices to kind of fund and increase the funding that we can give to families. We do a lot of referrals. So in addition to maybe giving families um, funding towards utilities, security deposits, rent to keep people housed. We will also do a lot of work with families around getting them to other services. So I've often have people who have come in looking for funding. Can you help me with my Eversource bill? It's about to be disconnected. They want me to do a $500 a month payment plan uh, on a $4,000 bill. And so I will sit and work with them and work with their budget and say, well, what if, have you applied for fuel assistance? You know, they will pay for some of your heating costs. Um, have we? have we negotiated a lower payment plan so then I have the ability to talk to Eversource and maybe get them a 100 or $150 payment. So it's not only about just giving out the money, it's about working with people to see what else they might be entitled to. So uh, we all, since I think we came last year, we have opened a pop-up pantry at Philly and Terrace where we come in once a month to Philly and to uh, provide food for people who can't make it to the various food pantries. We work very closely with the other food pantries, but we never turn anyone away. If they come to the Rochester Food Pantry and they have no, you know, they don't have any food, we will set them up with some food, then make referrals to the, the local food pantries of their towns. Any particular questions about what we do? Uh, questions from councillors? Councillor Wiven? Just an observation, and I welcome you to, to speak to it if, you, if you'd like. There are so many organizations, there, there's a lot of overlap. I mean, we, we talked about community action, we heard from the Summers with Food Pantry, and now we're getting the request from the Share Fund, and, and these things are similar but different, and they bleed together, overlap, support each other. How is it so fragmented, quite frankly? Uh, how, how come there's just not like one agency? Yeah, well, I can, that would be very nice, but, but the fact that it isn't right now, and I think we should could, we, I think what we've noticed that in the past five or 10 years, agencies are working more closely together. And what we had was, in the past, people would go to community action, and they would get maybe help or not help, and then they'd go over here, and then they'd go over here, and then they'd have to repeat their whole story and tell their whole story all over again, and it became very demoralizing. 
while we don't have a one-stop shopping, we do have agencies that are collaborating a lot more together. So if a family goes to see Louise, we'll say here at the welfare office, and she can help with something, but she can't help with the security deposit, but she can help with something towards first month rent, rent. or she can help with rent, but she can't help with electricity. If she refers them to me up at the share fund, I don't go through the whole thing again. They've already deemed themselves eligible with the welfare, so we're not gonna ask them all the old questions again. Sh they'll get permission, we'll share information between the two of them. So there is a lot more collaboration going on now, particularly and also with CAP as well. But CAP has funding that comes into particular streams and they're limited. So for right now, they're not helping with security deposit, but we can help with that. So I think it's, it the one-stop shopping would be nice, but it hasn't hit New Hampshire yet. Yeah. and, and it, again, just a comment. Um, I've had the good fortune not to need any of these services, and I recognize that, right? But I'm thinking, if if I were in a position where I needed uh, support services, uh, maybe I start with my city welfare office. That's hard enough, but then I have to go knock on a door over here and knock on a door over there, all in a time when I don't have transportation, and I, the the system. It's not terribly convenient for those that need uh, the assistance. I, it's just an observation. But one thing, if I can address that, one thing, I, I agree with you, but one thing that COVID did is got all of us more experienced in working, doing media, doing internet, doing um, telephone calls. So now we don't need to see people in person. We can do it over the phone. We can do it via emails. People are really good about, can you show me your lease? Take a picture of your lease, send it in to us. We don't have to personally come in which um, I think it's, it, there is definitely an improvement in the last three or four years. Perhaps the needle is moving. Yeah. Never fast enough, yeah. though. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Falcon. Yes, thank you. This, this sounds like a stupid question, but how many people do you serve basically in Somerset? Do you have a rough idea? I think financially we probably ser uh, served between 30 and 40 last year. Um, and then food-wise, I don't have the amount with regard to the Philly and Terrace, and we do have some people come in. We also have a diaper bank, which most of the other food fund pantries don't have. So we have um, diapers for all and wipes for little kids, but we also do uh, in Comsey, the, um, like Depends and Attends for, for seniors or people with disabilities or medical problems, but Medicare will not pay for those. So. Um, okay, thank you. Thanks. Other questions or comments from councillors? Yes, Councillor Goodwin. Just a, I guess, a riff off of what Council Witham was saying. Um, I, I, you know, I'm also sort of um, impressed with the ecosystem of nonprofits that are functioning in this space. And um, not to constantly point the finger at the state, but you know, this is, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the lack of of a centralized wealth. You know, it's, no one's going to like the sound of this, but a centralized, like, well-funded welfare system. And so there, these nonprofits have to. Um, bootstrap and work collaboratively and it's um, it's not particularly efficient but they're doing the work that needs to be done so thank you other uh, questions from counselors yes counselor Cameron hi uh, thank hi. you for everything that you do I have an oddball question do you take donations for the diapers and the incontinence oh, yes, yes. Do everything. and who would we contact you can contact me or you can contact the share fund directly okay get with uh, me at, at Jerry's food pantry we're we're based in the community center up in Rochester, and mm -hmm. we're very lucky as a food pantry, wouldn't you agree, Jerry, that we have the old um, cafeteria. So we have, we've had problems with walk-in freezers, but we have that whole kitchen area that was the cafeteria in the high school up there, and the big community room where people can come in. We also have a huge room that has a thrift store, so we will give people like, like little cards, little debit cards, that they can get um, clothing, um, or if people, from the community can come in, the clothing is really inexpensive, a dollar. But we do a lot of um, helping people. So one of the things we have noticed, particularly during the summer when the shelters are closed and people are moving more or sleeping rough, people run out of clothes. And so um, they'll often come in and we'll just kind of dump the old clothes and they can kind of clothe, pick up clothing and you know bathroom and hygiene supplies as well there. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I have a Subaru Forest I'll be glad to pick up. And um, the, um, we do have access to an office down at uh, Queensbury Mill. So if we have somebody who would like to meet with us and wants to meet personally, because sometimes 
doing it over the phone and doing it over email, that you, you can get results. But sometimes when you sit down with someone and look at their budget, you can f help them figure out places that they may not even knew that they could make a cut or that they can other benefits that they can apply for. Thank you. All right, thank you for your time. Other questions before we close up here? All right, yeah, okay. thank you so much. All right. Uh, next, we have Pope Memorial Humane Society with a request of 2,000. Is there anyone from Pope Memorial? Yes, come on up, say your name and your organization. Hi, my name's Molly Shanahan. Um, I work for Pope Memorial Humane Society and I'm the Development and Communications Manager there. Um, Pre-pandemic, we usually saw about a 50-50 split between animals we were taking in from the community and animals that we were transporting up from southern states. Post-pandemic uh, and in 2023 alone, about 95% of the animals we took into our shelter were directly from local communities. So we're really trying to work on expanding our food assistance program, which offers free dog and cat food to anyone who needs it, and really expand our low-cost medical care so that people can pay for spay and neuter, microchip, and rabies, and anything else they need that going to the vet is just too expensive. Thank you. Are there questions from council? Yes, Councilor Gibson, and then Parity Calendaro. Um, first off, thank you very much for everything you do. We've been associated with your former in-can. Um, you do great work, and you're great people. Um, it's more um, a comment than a question. Um, do you have specific requirements for like food donations or? So we don't, as long as it is unopened, we're able to take it. We have animals that are surrendered a lot for medical conditions because the people can no longer care for them once they are diagnosed with diabetes, they can't afford insulin. So honestly, we will take whatever food we are able to get because chances are if we don't have an animal that needs it at that time, we will down the road. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Councillor Parity Captain Zero. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for my dog. Oh, great. Um, I adopted my dog Daisy from Pope Memorial um, and I did not know about the um, free dog and cat food program, so that's very cool. Um, my question is, I know uh, Summers Earth doesn't have an animal control officer, so what sort of services does Pope Memorial do, if any, um, in conjunction with, or do you ever see the Summers Earth PD and sort of help um, in what would, in other communities, be dealt with under um, an animal control yes, person? Yes, we do. So we are partnered with them. And uh, so if they are called about a stray, it does come to us. And then on top of that, I believe from 2023, about 12% of the animals that were surrendered were from Summersworth. Mm -hmm. Ideally, that's kind of the last step. As th though we are a shelter, we prefer to keep animals in homes. I think a lot of people think that when people are surrendering an animal, they might not be a good person. And while that can sometimes be the case with abuse or neglect cases, more often than not, they are devastated to be bringing an animal in and surrender them because they have to move locations and the apartment doesn't allow dogs or they just can't afford the medical costs. Or like I said before, the animal was diagnosed with something they can't afford. So we're really trying to work with the community um, to help with whatever they need to keep their animal in their home. I just wanna add another thing that we added last year was during the pandemic, a lot of people adopted animals when they were working from home. And now that people are back in offices and not home 24 seven, a lot of those animals uh, have attachment issues and have, uh, <laughs> behavioral issues so a lot of times animals that we see coming into the shelter have behavioral issues and 
hiring a trainer or behaviorist is also very expensive. So we've hired a full-time trainer and behaviorist on staff. So before people surrender their animals, he goes to their house, he works with them, he provides free training classes for them just to kind of help out with that and kind of prevent any unnecessary surrenders and keep animals in a loving home. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, we have talked before about how we can get further upstream to prevent some of these issues that are very costly. So thanks for that overview and for everything that you do to help Summersworth. Thank you. Thanks. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, and next up we have Falls Chamber of Commerce with a request of 3,000. Thank you, and again, if you would state your name and organization. Good morning. I need to save the best for last. <laughs> I always joke and I'm nervous, sorry. Uh, my name is Bonnie McNair, and I am the executive director of the Falls Chamber of Commerce. Um, I've met most of you now, and I'm sure many of you get my very colorful, um, quirky emails many times a week. Um, I've just come before you now as um, a fairly newly installed um, executive director um, in the chamber. Um, we're kind of in a position where we're having to make some changes in the chamber, and part of those changes um, include um, starting a charitable foundation, um, working more with the city. I'm trying to partner more with Michelle in economic development to do kind of less fluff events and more impactful events for our business community. And um, those types of things require time and resources that we, we just haven't had um, in the past. And um, so I'm doing something we now have never done in the past, which is come to you lovely folks and ask to, to partner um, in a more financial way. Thank you. Are there any questions from counselors? Counselor Perry Cat Zero. Hi, Bonnie. Good morning. Good morning. Um, what other um, towns or cities support their chambers of commerce? I feel like that's probably a pretty common thing. Is that true? Yes. So roughly, um, and I was looking at kind of statistics in um, my research, and roughly about 40 to 60 percent of chambers of uh, cities and towns nationally um, support their chambers, but locally, um, Dover, Rochester, and Portsmouth all do support their chambers financially. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. I thought I know in Portsmouth, it's uh, a very big part of the budget is funded yes, by the city. Um, very different. Community. And speaking with some of the other chamber executives, their numbers are in the tens of thousands. Um, so similar to some of the other agencies we've um, heard from today, um, your organization does already work with our city staff. You're working um, on the economic development side. And can you uh, speak a little bit to these uh, more impactful events uh, that you're doing that can help increase economic development in Summersworth? Yeah, so, um, so I'm trying to take some of the events we're already doing, like um, Summerfest, for example. Um, we did Summerfest last year, and it was not the best. Um, it was our first year, and it unfortunately got completely rained out. But um, so one change I'm making to make it more impactful and really help the businesses is I make, I'm changing it to make it um, a Spirit of the Falls event to kind of mimic Harvest Day in a way. Um, we're bringing in just businesses from the Falls region, um, and it's to take place in Summersworth. Um, I haven't set the date yet, but I'm hoping for um, a date in late July. Kristen will be talking. Um, <laughs> but um, so the point is to bring all of the businesses from the Falls region, from the Berwicks, from Ra uh, Rollinsford and Summersworth to Main Street um, in a big way and bring the towns to us to highlight, look at all the things we have now. Um, it's to showcase our makers, our restaurants, our folks from the edge, all the businesses we have in Summersworth that people just don't know about, all the new restaurants we have downtown. Um, 
folks who aren't on Main Street can, you know, see the Stripe 9 in the plaza, can see Folded, can see Flame, even the ones that aren't here on Main Street, they can see what we have here in Summersworth, and we can bring the folks that we can't see from the falls to us. Um, I'm hoping to do the largest part of our big events here in town. I'm hoping to do um, a golf tournament here in town. I'm our business resource fair, where we offer more meaningful business resources than we have in the past with DEI and inclusive um, resource speakers, a panel, a panelist type event, um, looking at um, some folks with disability um, resources for, um, now I'm blanking out, I've been talking to thousands of people, it feels like, trying to just pull different people from different areas to really help our small businesses and really pinpoint the, the specific needs that they have because I've identified in speaking to many out of our businesses um, that their, their personal needs. They're mostly small businesses that don't have a lot of resources at their fingertips. So I'm trying to be that resource for them and provide those resources that they don't have. Um, where corporations have them, they don't know what resources they need. So I'm trying to kind of be that all incumbent kind of one stop, and that's what my business resource fair is going to be. So that's the ty type of kind of um, product I'm trying to provide for them. Awesome. Thank you. Um, that sparked a couple more things. I have one question for um, maybe the city manager, finance director, and then um, a final one for you, Bonnie. But um, we, I've, I've missed a chunk here. I was on for two years and I was off for two years and now I'm back. So I'm not sure exactly how this worked, but can you, um, we used to have uh, an economic development person and now I know that that's been sort of reallocated or shifted in the planning department. So um, Robin, used, Robin Comstock used to be our economic development person. What is the, has that position just been totally eliminated or has it been restructured um, I'm trying to see you know what is our most recent economic development gap in terms of city staff city manager or are we hiring for that I don't know it's been uh, restructured the council approved restructuring we, we uh, created a planning technician uh, position so uh, between the planning technician as Bonnie mentioned Michelle uh, they they uh, dial in to uh, ED issues um, they're active on uh, their, their communications through, through the region. They have uh, uh, pretty much weekly uh, phone calls and Zoom meetings, so they're, they're dialed into that. So that's where we uh, close the gap. Okay, thank you. Um, I think from my view, it's very helpful to have you in the city. Um, we're now asking fewer people to do more on this front, so it's really good to have that partnership with you. Um, and finally, I wasn't gonna share this with anyone because I think it's such a good idea that I almost bought the URL because it just feels like a million dollar idea but you know on Economic Development Council we were talking about like rebranding of Summersworth and hearing you mention all of our restaurants re-sparked this idea so I'm just going to give it away for free I guess um, but we have all these amazing new restaurants Anatolia obviously has gotten a ton of good press we have Flame now we have the new Vietnamese place that Councilor Vincent was telling us about which thank you for that tip um, next to Market Basket and we have like what four Indonesian restaurants, which is incredible for a city of our right, size. Right, we've got the breweries. We have so much. So I just offer Yummer's worth. No, you did not. But I will one thousand percent. Like I will make that our <laughs> restaurant week, and I will push that. I will one thousand yeah. percent do Yummer's worth. That is, we're doing it. Thank you. It's done. I think it's genius. <laughs> Thank you. But yes. <laughs> I'm on board. Great. I'm on board, and you're on my event committee. <laughs> sorry, I'm not sorry. You're good. All right. Well, that's all I have to offer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll go get some and then Cameron. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you for what you're trying to do. Um, the city can use every kind of boost uh, that's available to us, and basically just to comment. Um, Having run several small businesses in the city, 
uh, the importance of small businesses to any community is severely under-recognized. And what a lot of people don't really understand is how much charitable support small businesses give to communities. Uh, when I was located, when we were located in the plaza, and I should say this, it was my wife's business, not me. Um, regular visitations from different organizations, um, the schools, um, charitable outfits, asking for help with what they were doing in the city. And the lifeblood of any community is small business owner. And thank you for everything that you're trying to do to make that more prominent. Absolutely. It's it's really when I when I got this job, it I keep saying that, you know, even though I've come into kind of somewhat of a struggling chamber, this is this is my passion. This is the job I have to have. So I'm, I'm very dedicated to making this um, work and grow and thrive, so. Councilor Cameron. Hi. Hi, Bonnie, thank you for all that you do. My question would be, since uh, downtown is hopping with all these yummy restaurants, would you ever consider moving the office back downtown? 100%, I would love to, I would love to. Um, right now, again, with budget constraints being what they are, um, it's just not possible. Um, but yeah, I would love to have a building with a place for folks to go. Right now we have a very small um, office where luckily, you know, since I've been in there, um, folks can, can come visit me, actually. It's a, it's a great little spot. Um, but um, to your point, yeah, we don't have a conference room. We don't have um, a place where people can go. And I'd love to be that, you know, partner. I know, um, like Ed Miles has a, an office day here for the SBDC. Um, I would love to do like an office day, an open office day where folks could just come in and, you know, visit with the chamber. I'm, you know, thinking of doing some of that with some of the banks and just, you know, showing up and just being um, a, a presence around the community and just, just being there so folks can just see that we have a chamber and it's doing stuff, <laughs> you know, because I think that's just not been um, apparent in the past. I'm, I'm really trying to really change how, how we view the chamber. Yeah, it used to be located down. Yeah, I know. It was beautiful, that little, little spot. It's yeah, perfectly it located. Had the conference room, it had everything. All the things. Yeah. And, you know, I hope that's, that's our future um, again. Thank you. Other questions, comments? All right. I'm not seeing any. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, that closes out the list that we have in front of us. Are there any other requests who did not get covered yet that we missed? I accidentally skipped anything like that. Just double checking. All right, are there any other ideas, discussion items, comments, questions before we close this whole section out? Yes, Councillor Goodwin. Just curious on uh, being a, a newcomer to this process, what our reconciliation process is here? Because I imagine some councillors want to adjust the um, proposed budget on a couple items, and how do we reconcile that across nine people? Great question. Um, I know Councillor Levin has some thoughts, so I'll share my own first. Um, typically, the process has been just proposing amendments, discussing them, and seeing if we get the votes to pass them, and then moving forward. Um, certainly, if by the point we get to this, we are already over the tax cap, every additional piece would need to be two-thirds voted on. No, it would be the final budget. Oh, I'm mistaken, my apologies. So we would adjust it, and then we'd take a final vote. Um, but yeah, Councillor uh, Witham, you wanted to add? No, I think you're spot on. Um, just as a reminder, uh, as the mayor mentioned, we can't take action on the budget right now. It's on the table, so it has to have a motion to take it off the table. Typically, it's awkward to do that in a workshop mode, so that would be up for discussion on Monday night. And as the mayor said, we typically go at these things line by line, see if there's majority support. Ultimately, the, the full budget, uh, likely with any amendments that go up, uh, would be overriding the tax cap by some amount. So that would require the two-thirds vote. But typically, the amendments are just 
um, a majority, simple majority. Other questions, comments, ideas, discussion points before we close this out? Councilor Gibson. Um, when we close this out, take a brief That's break. That's my thoughts exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, no, seeing none, I will close our community support section and we will stay in recess for five minutes. Call the remaining workshop to order. We are at a recess. Thank you, everybody. Um, just a, again, a few points of clarity before we jump into this. We're going to start on the revenue section, which is C1, page C1, if you're following along. We are then going to slowly work our way through section by section until we get to the school section. We are not going to do the school section today. We do not have anyone from the school to help us with it. Uh, and I think uh, we have heard from them already, met with them already, not necessary at today's meeting. Today's meeting is about the city. Um, so again, we'll work our way through. How it's gonna work is, I'll just kind of guide us to the section that we're on. I will once again open it up to questions, start with questions, and then I will open it up to ideas, discussions, and so forth for that section. Again, that would be your opportunity if you're thinking about you know, changing something, making an amendment, to air that to the council so folks are aware that maybe it's coming down the pipeline and could then reach out to you to talk more about it or discuss it. But we are not amending or opening it because again, as was stated, it's a workshop, it's on the table, we don't need to pull it off. City Manager. Yeah, my apologies. I, I meant to mention something in regards to community support. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's important uh, for council to oftentimes see somebody c come here and speak to what their request is. And Meals on Wheels, um, we got a phone call from, uh, I think it's Jamie Chagnon, that called the city clerk's office, and due to the storm, they weren't able to make it out uh, of their driveway. They had issues at home and, and so forth, so they just wanted to extend their apologies for not being here, but certainly um, absence of the weather and some issues they had they would have been here so thank you sorry about that appreciate that thank you all right other questions on how this is going to go are we feeling like we're ready all right let's do it we'll jump right in starting with c1 so this is our revenue section i'm not going to read it line by line but i would open it up to questions c1 and c2 true good point it's really just two pages on revenue yes councilor parity count zero yeah, um, I have a question about the state adequacy line, state adequacy grant for the schools. I know that fluctuates year to year, and is that something that we won't know for sure until much later in the year, or is that something that we do already know for sure? I can definitely answer pieces of it. I'll throw it over to Scott in a One second. Um, yeah. But yeah, later in the year. Later in the year for sure. Uh, we have an estimated amount that they provided us uh, based on their biennial budget, which was passed. So the state does a two-year budget. Um, the estimate that we have is fairly accurate. However, state legislature is currently <laughs> debating a number of bills that may impact state adequacy, a few of which that I talked about at our last meeting. Um, so this is based on if the amount that the state house and governor uh, provides us based on the budget that was passed most recently. Uh, Scott, did you want to add anything to that? <coughs> yeah. 
Um, no, that's that's about right. So what happens is this is an estimate. They'll get the actual amount um, in September. And what we've done in the last couple of years, the, the actual amounts come in higher than what the estimate is. And then we've come back before city council and city council has considered a uh, supplemental budget right. to a supplemental appropriation for that difference. So, but this is just an estimate. We won't know the final till September. Thank city you. manager, did you want to add too? Yeah, not particularly for this line, but when we're talking about state revenue, I would just point out the highway block grant and the mails and rooms tax distribution money. <coughs> um, uh, we don't know the final number. So we get the tax rate set also. It's subject to change. Usually it's not a, a huge change um, over the last many years. And again, all of our revenues are based on uh, just tracking them and what's taking place, whether it's motor vehicle registrations or interest on our investments and that sort of thing. And we track that. But come September, before we uh, do the tax rate setting, we have a chance, uh, Scott and I sit down and, and um, can amend our revenues based on uh, uh, further tracking and whatnot and uh, tweak those a little bit and then we get the tax rate set we have final numbers uh, both for the school and the city yeah just to uh, comment on that this has been an ongoing problem for years and uh, I'm pretty sure that it went to court um, because they were tired of having this happen so I think the Democrats brought it to court correct me if I'm wrong and then uh, it actually got appealed so they appealed the decision of the court because they were supposed to have the numbers out. That's that's the best of my recollection. Uh, and obviously, you can see that it's, we're still playing this game. That how can you do a budget when you don't know what the heck is going to be coming at you? Yep. Councilor Gibson. Um, first question: the attitude. I don't know if this is appropriate for now, or should I wait till? the actual school is being discussed? Uh, we are on revenue. There is advocacy in this. But if it's more about the spending and the spending allocation for the school budget, I would no. maybe wait until we do that. It's a question that um, we received an upgraded adequacy <laughs> um, money last or this year, last year, whatever you want to say. Um, supposedly because the formula was adjusted. Does this number represent that formula? So last year was unique because the State House was debating their biennial budget. They hadn't passed the budget when we were passing ours. Uh, so they were utilizing numbers that were estimates based on the previous two-year budget that the state passed, which ended June of that year. The state needs to, they needed last year to develop and pass their two year budget. Um, they hadn't done that. And so, in doing that, they changed a variety of factors in how adequacy is distributed for the current budget that the state's operating under. That budget goes through this year and next year. Um, however, the state house is known and is currently working on a few tweaks and changes to even that budget as we speak right now. So we might see changes again. But the reason last year's was such a dramatic difference and why we got such a larger supplemental appropriation from the state later in the year um, was because they essentially passed a brand new two-year budget that had a bunch of changes to it. Um, hopefully I'm capturing that correctly. Yeah. So then they're changing the formula again in they this are budget? debating whether to do that, yes. OK. Um, and hmm. forgot what my other question was. <laughs> if it comes to you, I'll call on you again. Other questions, Councilor Witham? Yeah, just an observation. Um, the revenue estimates that are provided under school here were provided to city staff by the school department. So. Uh, the superintendent, the business administrator, and other staff there uh, generate these numbers, and that's how they get plugged into our budget. Um, it has typically been the practice, and quite frankly, I think it's an appropriate practice for the est revenue estimates to be 
uh, sort of on the low end of what they might project. I don't think it's a good budget strategy to go to the high end and not meet it. That's a roll of the dice that you don't want to be in. Uh, so this is a, a practice that's been in place for a, a number of years, as long as I can recall. Um, we can bemoan and debate all day about the state and whether they should fund more or how they should forecast the number or all of that. We, we have absolutely no control over that. Uh, I have bemoaned that since I've been on this council, so uh, to no avail, right? So um, you're kind of stuck with it, right? I hate to say that. And then we could always look at a supplemental appropriation as we have uh, many, many times. I would like to have council turn to page C2 and uh, other financing sources, uh, the use of fund balance to reduce taxes, that's at $1.5 million. Uh, that's what it was uh, last time around. That's what's our, our current budget. I only bring this up because I know during difficult budget conversations, which this is shaping up to be one of those, uh, that there can be an urge to look at grabbing more use of fund balance to soften the blow, sort of speak. Um, I don't know if Bob or Scott could speak to uh, sort of the health of our fund balance right now. Uh, if there's any wiggle room on that number, uh, my, my concern as a counselor always has been, is it sustainable? So example, if all of a sudden you decide to move that to one point seven five million dollars uh that's likely your number in next year's budget right it, it never goes back down so that creep concerns me so i don't know if that question is clear or, or finance not. director Smith. yeah <clears throat> i think it was clear um yeah we're, we're very comfortable we have a good fund balance right now um i think the last time i did the statistic we were a little over 12 percent um, our goal is to be between five and 17. That's what our fund balance policy is. So, so we're, we're in good shape. And I think you've outlined it perfectly. The concern when you use fund balance is the fact is it's going to come to some point in time and you never know for sure when, but eventually you're not going to have that level of fund balance to support it. And so it's just a loss of revenue. And <clears throat> as you know, and you've dealt with this, especially on the school side, the impact that loss of revenue can have on your budget because that impacts our ability to hit the tax cap. So you're, you're really <coughs> reducing services. You can't increase your expenditure side at all because you've got to make up that revenue side. So I, I think we're, we're good. I think certainly that could be a consideration for this budget process. But I think you've outlined it perfectly. It, it <coughs> sets up next year, and you just have to watch for future years. Thank you. Other um, questions? A yeah, follow-up yeah, if I may. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you could, Scott, just talk me through this this thought that I have and, and I'm struggling with it in my head and trying to make the math work. If we chose not to use, let's say we keep this 1.5 intact, but uh, we use some additional fund balance to tick off some one-time purchases that are in the budget. Uh, and I'll use rolling stock by way of example. It's, just eliminate that or some of those other things. Just buy them right out of the gate. Don't fund them through the budget. Just just deal with them. Does that impact us in future budget cycles? It would help us with this one, but would it hurt us moving forward? It, it wouldn't have to, no. So if you're doing it for one-time expenditures, whatever that would be, that's exactly what would happen. So, so basically you're looking at two functions of using your fund balance. One is to reduce taxes. One is to support a project or program and then that is that one-time expense goes away in a future budget and you're just back to that 1.5 in this case or whatever that fund balance would be. So I, I just offer that out to my fellow counselors that that might be a way that I might be amenable to using a little bit more fund balances to tick off some of those one-time items. <clears throat> Councilor Vincent and Gibson. Thank you, Your Honor. So, um, yeah, so when I think of that, I think of the two sales of the property that we just sold one for almost uh, what half a million, and then one for two hundred thousand. So my question is: Is that because I didn't see it, I didn't see it in here unless it's under it's, it can't be under sale of city properties because that's twenty five thousand. Is is that in this fund balance? It, well, it right now. Not the finance director. I'm asking him. 
I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Tess. I'm just kidding. Right now, yes, it, it, it would eventually end up in your fund balance. We didn't budget for either of those sales. So the sale of the police station for the 200000 if we had gate, when you, if you saw our, our actual revenues, that revenue is it's an, a little bump because we've sold other property, but it's 200000 Our estimate was 25000 Our actual revenue right now is 200000 not knowing the point in time that we're going to sell the National Guard, that if that happens before the end of this fiscal year, that will also go into this revenue, and it will close into your fund balance. Um, we didn't anticipate it for next year because we just aren't sure on the timing of when that's going to be. Okay, so that's that was that's my fault because I was unclear. I thought that we had already made the uh, that they'd already made the purchase but they're still going through all the they're still going through their steps we haven't yeah, actually yeah. closed and and received I didn't that think money we did yet. thank you councilor yeah councilor gibson okay this councilor would have beat me to the punch because that was going to be my thought on how to do a one time add to the usage of fund balance was take one-time purchases out of the actual operating budget use fund balance and not have to worry about it becoming a built-in factor on the budget um, this is a tough budget cycle and that to me would be one common sense way to soften the impact of what we have to do and give us some ability to maneuver as far as the other budget items. Um, that beyond that, um, the money from the two sales, when does that actually show up? I, I know that the sale hasn't been completed. It can't do anything, but will it be added into this year's budget, assuming it closes within a reasonable period? If or we <clears throat> if we close on that property before June 30th, then yes, it'll come in as a revenue, um, and then when we close the books, it'll fall to fund balance. Um, if we close after June 30th, it'll be in, in, in the, what you're considering here, but it'll be in your FY25 budget as a revenue. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I actually have a quick question, if you don't mind, uh, for you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you do mind? <laughs> um, how are we on this year's budget? Uh, the reason I ask is because, uh, in theory, if we have any extra funds left over from this year's budget, that would also go into the fund balance for next year. Um, if we're looking to expend um, one-time funds, uh, that's money... So this any extra money from this year's budget in theory is money that's already been taxed on residents that then would go into the fund balance which then may be additional funds available to us so I'm just curious where do we stand for this year's budget well we're, we've got a couple good revenue sources where we're uh, over and and I was going to speak to one but for example the sale on the property so we we recognized a, a revenue of 25000 against the budget, and we're a little over two hundred as we sit now. And if we close on the National Guard property, then it's going to be another four hundred, approximately. Um, we'll have that excess. The other revenue I wanted to point out um, is interest on investments. And I think the, the council, it would be helpful to be aware of this, that interest on investments is very, it's directly impacted by what the Federal Reserve does with the interest rates. Um, and we're, we obviously went through a period of time where, where they drastically increased rates quickly. Um, so although in the FY25 budget, we're right now recognizing or, or estimating a $600,000 in revenue for interest in investments, this current fiscal year, we're probably going to do double that, I would say. We're going to do about $1.2 million, give or take, in terms of interest on investments. Our concern with that right now is that the Fed continues to signal that sometime this year they're going to start lowering those interest rates. So just to give you kind of a general idea of the impact that can have as they begin to change those interest rates, in fiscal 22, we were able to raise $63,000 
in interest on investments with relatively the same level of capital that we have now, where this year we're probably going to do 1.2 million. Um, so our concern is the fact it, when and if they start to reduce those interest rates, we're going to be caught chasing that going backwards. So we need to watch that. We need to be wary of that. So it's creating a lot of excess revenue for us this year um, and perhaps next year, depending. But the reverse is also going to be true. They're going to start lowering those interest rates, and then we're going to be back before you saying we've overestimated or we've got to reduce that when we create the budget. So I just – I just wanted to make you aware of that specific circumstance as well. Appreciate that. With them and then get them. Thank you, Scott, for that. And it, and it kind of speaks to how on the school revenue we, we, we shoot for the lower end estimate, and it's a similar strategy here. And I offer up this as, as Dave Witham's view of approaching uh, budgets. Uh, there are two words that come to mind for me. Uh, one is predictable. Um, and we see how we struggle with those items that aren't predictable, right? Uh, the other word that I like to use is sustainable, right? Is the funding strategy sustainable? So by predicting to the low end, even though it might be off by half a million or more dollars, uh, it is a more sustainable process. So you know, just kind of two metrics that I use, predictable and sustainable, I think it helps as you navigate this stuff. Thank you. Council Gibson. Um, first off, I agree with what Council and what I'm saying. Um, predictable is always better than the alternative to it. Um, the second thing is in designing this budget, we had to follow the state rules pertaining to um, property tax values and that the fact that we're doing a reevaluation um, not asking you for a hard number or anything like that but what is in a reasonable guess low end the actual increase in property values after the reevaluation I haven't uh summarize the total but to give you kind of a percentage that people can look at their own personal property and figure it out is our, our principal residents um, you know so single family homes multifamily homes um, are running between 60 and 65 percent of market value so if you look at what you're assessed for you can do the calculation to see what the market value is approximately and our commercial property is running between 70 and 75 percent of market so um, so that's so that kind of can tell you where we're going to be um, at least certainly on a personal level when you look at your own property um, when the reassessment is done will it be brought to full market value yes it, it'll be brought to full market value that's right and, and it'll be full market value as of April 1st. Thank you. Other questions, discussion items, ideas for this section? Councilor Perry Tanzera. Um, speaking exactly to that, which is it the local property taxes, so the very top line that would be affected by? It, it, another yes, way to it, put it is that's the line that would be higher if we were not in a reevaluation year. No, that number doesn't change. The, the amount of property taxes that you raise doesn't change. That's determined by the budget that you set. So the valuation, what the NETA says valuation, that's calculated after your budget. So your, your budget or the amount of taxes you raise are just your appropriations. You have all these non-tax revenues. And then the balance is what you need to raise in property taxes to balance your budget. Then the tax rate is calculated by taking that amount of money that you need to raise and divide it by the net assessed valuation. So what will happen is as our, as our net assessed valuation goes up, our tax rate will go down. Um, but the amount of property taxes we raise will, stay, will be the same. It's just going to be driven by the budget. So the confusing part with a reval is although the tax rate is going down, your property values are going up. So it's difficult on a, on a specific individual basis to determine how much your individual assessment's going to go up. So they always say that it's approximately like one-third people, their property taxes go up, 
one third stays the same, one third goes down. I don't know if that actually is gonna hold true, but, but based on what your new assessed valuation is based on the market, we'll make a determination how much your property taxes either go up, stay the same, or go down. Right, so I, I mean, I guess my question is, um, when we were talking about the school budget, we were saying that we, there are some line, line items we've discussed already that we're estimating on the lower end and we know hopefully we'll come in on a higher end. But I remember there being a chunk of money that we couldn't factor into the budget that had to do with um, new construction. Um, so where would that revenue line item be? Yeah, or that would, would, would it not be revenue? Yeah, that would that is a calculation within the tax cap. So what that does, it, that okay. would have raised your ceiling for the tax cap. So that would have directly, and, and assuming we created a budget that went to that tax cap, it would increase your property taxes. That, that, you, the, the amount of taxes you collect, that's exactly right. Thank you so much. It should be used in setting the rate come November as well, correct? Yeah, depending how it goes. Um, usually we're, we're doing that in October or so, but we've been a little behind because the last couple of years, the state has come with additional adequacy. So we had to go through our process to do a supplemental appropriation for the school right. and get that to the state and then go get our tax rate. Thank you. With them, Gibson Goodwin. Yeah, thank you. Just a, 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 it, it's my annual comment because we focus so much on tax rate, right? And the tax rate will have an estimate as we muddle through the budget and as we pass a budget, uh, we'll have an estimated tax rate. Uh, DRA, as Scott has explained, will set that in the fall. Uh, it's tended to be later fall now. Um, and uh, more often than not, almost always, <laughs> it is less than uh, our projection. Again, we, 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 we tend to be conservative there, uh, which is, I think, the correct approach. Uh, and that might sway even more this year with all of these variables that, that we talked about. But tax rate, and I get why we focus on it. It's a number, it's a metric, and everybody gets all worked up about it. You hear a lot in the community about we have a, one of the highest tax rates. But then you have to juxtapose that with property value, right? And I use the comparison all of the time. Uh, I'll use my house. 2,200 square foot house on an acre, not quite an acre and a half. I pay about $8,500 a year in property taxes. If I were to pick up my house and move it to Durham, Durham has a much lower tax rate than Summersworth, or it's lower. I wouldn't say much lower, it's lower. I would spend about $14,000 in property taxes there because my property value would be more even though the tax rate is less. So I'm concerned about what the out-of-pocket expense is. Uh, I'd rather pay 8500 than 14000 even though the tax rate is less in that 14000 community. So yeah, I guess we focus on tax rate. Uh, that's, a, that's an image thing. But it's not the whole story. And I always like to talk about that at least once. So that's <laughs> off my plate. So there you go. Thanks. Councilor Gibson, then Goodwin. I'll present the opposite to that. It's not a matter of what the tax rate is. It's not a matter of what the tax bill is. It's what is affordable to the individual footing that bill. So it doesn't matter if you're in Durham or in Summersworth. You buy in Summersworth because you can afford it. You buy in Durham because you can afford it. They represent relatively different income levels. Um, what my approach, I think, to this budget cycle would be is that we have a number of increasing revenues downstream from when we have to set the budget. And I'm not suggesting we go crazy or anything. But if we determine what the needs for the community are to be best served, I have no problem 
digging into the um, fund balance a little deeper in some sort of one-time way because if you know that it's just like anything else if you have a job you're getting paid ten dollars an hour you know sometime in the following in the coming year you're going to get fifteen dollars an hour and it's pretty much guaranteed you can change how you spend your funds at the present time so what my feeling would be is look at as many as possible one-time costs that we can pull out of the operating budget dig into the fund balance for that one shot because that fund balance is going to get replenished during the year because of the new construction uh, the reassessment I mean those are basically guaranteed unless we have an earthquake or something um, so that is m going to be my approach to this how I want to spend that money is the only question thank you Councillor Goodwin <coughs> excuse me thank you your honor um I think this is a parental question for myself as well and one thing that I actually spent a lot of time thinking about even before I ran for council um and uh, you know I think the conversation around affordability is is the right one to be having and what if you parse that out it is both the mortgage of how much the home costs, but also the taxes, which are in escrow with your mortgage. So it's your total payment. So what economics will show is that the higher your tax bill, the less affordable your property is, the less valuable your property is. So there's an inverse relation between a high tax rate and a high nominal tax bill and your property value. So in the context of a property tax dependent state like New Hampshire, where we don't have a broad based sale or income tax, uh, that creates winning communities and losing communities in terms of rate. So Summersworth has a very high tax rate. So the likelihood that you have a million dollar home here in Summersworth is low because the tax rate on that home actually depresses the value. So you could have a, what you know, my house in Portsmouth would be a million dollar home, like no question. Um, and here it's, you know, 330, three, you know, whatever, in the threes probably. Um, and that is, you know, complex on how that's determined, but tax rate is a big, a big driver of that. So it is challenging because on one hand, we want to bring the rate down because that uh, enables a broader diversity of investment and, in, you know, one would hope lowers the nominal bill. But at the end of the day, the best we can do is to steward the budget to our best ability on the, on the total. Um, we don't have control over the assessment. The market is doing what it does. Um, so, you know, in, as, mu as much as we like to think we have control over the rate and the nominal bill, we really don't, I guess is what I'm getting at. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, and I, I just, you know, I think that's important to undermine, like, obviously we talk about these things as benchmarking and, and you know, wanting to be mindful of these things, but, um, you know, the, the, the assessment, which is, um, ec you know, macroeconomic force is determining what the property values here in summer's worth, worth, worth is going to ultimately determine what the rate is, uh, we determine what the budget is, uh, and then those two things combined determine what the nominal bill someone receives is. Um, and just to close out this ramble, um, I, you know, I, be, I believe in talking with Scott, typically in an assessment year, and th that third, 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 third stay the same, third go up, third go down, I don't know wh where that logic comes from. I don't have a lot of experience in re-evaluations, re but that sounds crazy to me. It, like, the overall value of properties are going to go up. Like, the overall value of summer's worth uh, property is going to increase. Um, so with that, my expectation is that the rate after the reevaluation will go down, even if we are doing a budget override in the tax cap and uh, people's nominal bills go up, their rate, the rate may go down, which, you know, cuts both ways. It could be good, could be bad, depending on 
your question of affordability, if the rate goes down and that increases your home value and you're still paying a lot on the tax bill, it doesn't really help you. But um, anyways, thank you. Uh, for context, last reevaluation near five years ago, the rate went down by $6. Donna, can I just say one thing on that? Let me just say one quick comment on that. Yeah. that okay, so look, this is, that's just a game. That's just a game. Oh, look, the rate went down. Property value went up. It's a game. It's a numbers game. That's all it is. To keep everybody happy that it's not $39 a, per thousand. That's just, it's a game. Am I right or am I wrong? I think it's the law we live under. I don't right. think it's a game. I mean, it's just the state says every five years or in other circumstances, you have to do a revaluation and bring your property values to, to market. We're in a period of time where the market is increasing the value of everybody's property. So right. just the sheer equation makes the tax rate go down. There are years where property values have gone down. So you go through a revaluation and your property values go down, your tax rate goes up. So it's, it's not really a game. It's just it's the way this state is set up. Right. And it's just the, it's, a, it's a mathematical <clears throat> function. Thank you. Sure. Questions, comments, concerns, ideas? Councilor Curry, Sam Zero. Yeah, I just wanted to add to this conversation. I appreciate that Councilor Gibson brought up affordability. I think that's um, an important piece to the tax rate tax bill discussion. Um, it also does occur to me, though, that the tax, whether the tax rate is down or your uh, property value is up, it still matters even if that balances out on your bill because you have more wealth and you have more if your property value goes up, if your rate goes down, you're still in a better financial position long term as are the next generations that come after you because your overall wealth, borrowing power, et cetera, goes up. Um, so it's very important to look at affordability, of course, because it's for some people that's a make or break thing, um, but property values going up is a net positive thing. Um, I just had one other specific question here on the line. Um, other state aid, it went from nine plus to 26 plus uh, this year and just wanted to ask the question of what made that big increase or what that line item consists of. Yeah, that one specifically, I'd have to defer to the school. I'm not sure exactly what makes that up, but that's a school revenue. building aid yeah we'll have to maybe flag that for the schools yes council rhythm yeah to the notion of <clears throat> back to the use of fund balance and picking off some of those one-time items if I could ask city staff between now and our next meeting uh, perhaps try to identify what some of those might be a quick glance of the budget for me, and, it, and again, it's just a very quick glance uh, here. Um, under capital outlay, we have um, the, the vehicle lease purchases, the, 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 those, those capital items, uh, rolling stock. It's typically year one of a multi-year lease agreement. So if you think about just buying those outright, you help future budgets as well, because that they're not, you, you don't have to fund that portion of the lease agreement. Uh, we have the master plan uh, that we could just fund. And although it's a little more complicated because we don't have line item authority in the school department budget, but under their tier one of cuts is uh, computer technology um, at like 30,000 or something as I glanced at it. Can we just do that? And I, I know that's harder to do because we don't have that bottom line authority, but Somehow I think we can make that work. But is, are there any others? And those are the ones that I kind of flag real quick. You know, some total is probably $100,000 there. But uh, uh, it's a start. It's kind of where I'm sort of going. Good idea. Other questions, ideas? Good one. Good one. I guess uh, to that end, maybe what would be more, would be easier is to, 
determine how much we're willing to go beyond the 1.5 for a one-time expenses, and then that budget is, the, you know, to your to the points you were making earlier. But maybe we make a general a general pot, and that that pot can be assigned, you know, a little a little more easily than pulling specific things out. So I don't know what two hundred thousand uh, dollars for capital outlay funded through the use of funds. And then from there, staff and council can determine what items those are. Thank you. Yes, Council Gibson. I don't know who the proper person to answer this is, but as to the council wouldn't suggest, oh my God, my mouth is not working today. Um, funding the computer technology in the schools. It, can the council make a specific transfer resolution to the school department, or are we only allowed to transfer funds on a general basis? That's a great question. I don't know if I know the answer. Yeah, maybe restate it for better clarity. I, I can, but I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. Like with the excess adequacy money that came through, we could not dictate how the school would use it. We either yay, nay, or okay. whatever. What I'm asking is where we would be pulling out of the fund balance to do it, can we specifically designate funding to them? You don't have, they always have bottom line authority, so you would just be. You could indicate what the intent was, but it's it's all always going to be up to the school board. Which would have the advantage of, shall we say, a strongly hinted at, do it our way or don't. <laughs> we we can't tell them what to do. No, I'm we can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just I joking. think to your point, uh, maybe if I'm understanding you correctly. If we override the tax cap for a certain amount for the school portion, so we allow their bottom line number to be above a certain amount, and then we utilize to pay for that extra amount fund balance or a pool of money, that could work. You're, you're pulling more from one place to pay for more somewhere else. But you can't say, Here's the amount we're giving you, and you got to use it for this. We can't. There's no no world in which we can do that. Okay. Other questions, comments, ideas? Yes, Councilor Parity Cabadero. Um, so, just a logistical question. I think how I was thinking about th this idea of using some fund balance so that we're not writing another line item into the budget that would then uh, carry over into future years. I guess I was imagining that that would be some sort of separate um, ordinance or resolution to appropriate X funds from the fund ballot, from the fund balance separate from this budget discussion to X, Y, Z, just sort of knowing in our minds, those are line items that we're then gonna be striking from this budget so that that appropriation would be somewhat separate from this um, bottom line budget. I think Councilor Rhythm has an answer, but I'm going to add first to that there's a few ways in which you could do it. One being you just increase the line item through an amendment on the use of fund balance and you keep in the items that are one-time funds and we change them if we need to in their actual line item location. Alternatively, we strike them all uh, and when it, the time comes, say, you know, July 1st, the new budget year, we could supplemental appropriate from the fund balance to pay for all of those things. We could use, we could put them into this year's budget and use any overages we have to pay for them if we have enough. There's a few ways that I know you wanted to add to. Yeah, my, my thought, and again, I'd welcome input from city staff between now and our next meeting. Uh, my initial reaction was to simply strike the items that I mentioned from the budget, so it's a reduction of whatever that amount is, and uh, perhaps even by the next meeting introduce a resolution, uh, or probably have to be an ordinance to utilize fund balance, uh, supplemental appropriation, you could do it right now, mm -hmm. uh, just to purchase these things now, uh, so that they disappear from the budget, but then there's companion 
legislation kind of run in parallel. Yep. Great. Totally makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so all, always possible. Uh, yes, Councilor Vincent. You're good. Just waving. Just. <laughs> Just hand motioning. All right. Understood. Understood. The French is coming out. It's communication. Uh, all right. Other thoughts. We've been on this for forty something One minutes. Page. One page. I know. We're doing good, everybody. One page, but it's happening. This is very important. I think the discussion has been uh, robust. I think we all have a better understanding. I think those watching hopefully have a better understanding. But I just want to be mindful. Want to let people have their time if they like to, because this is the perfect time to discuss things. But if we're good, we're going to move on. Everyone seem all right? Okay, we're moving on. That brings us to C3, which is elected leadership. Again, with these sections, we're just going to kind of do sections at a time. So we've got mayor and council first. That's two pages, C3 and C4. Are there any thoughts, ideas, questions? Councillor Pepin? I, ju I just have one question. Uh, we went up $2,000 on uh, travel and training, and uh, it was 500 before. Now it's 2,500. Not that I really I have a problem with the number. It's just, it's, I just wonder how come so much of a big increase. If somebody could just explain that a little bit. Yeah. City manager, I'll defer to you. Yeah, I'm talking with Mayor Girding um, and looking at the prior mayor's budget. The association dues wasn't being spent, so we just reallocated uh, to, to try to cover other areas that were being spent more, as well as the mayor had some ideas about perhaps um, some of his travel and maybe going up to uh, uh, Tetford Mines and that sort of thing. Yes. So there's a few things that the mayor's thinking about, and we just uh, want well, to his direction, just wanted to level fund it and place it more, <laughs> perhaps more accurately where we might use it. Yeah, I forgot about that, so I could answer that too. Yes, uh, the folks from Thetford Mines had come and visited us and invited us to come over and visit them. Uh, I thought it would be great to do at some point over the year. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Certainly understand, but wanted to put that in just so there were expenses or allocated for it if it were to be a possibility. Yeah, Councilor Prady Cotondero. Uh, what is that? The what mines? <laughs> Can Thetford you just mines, explain what that is? Our sister city up in uh, Quebec, Canada. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So they had visited us, when was that, last year, this time, maybe? Yeah, about a year ago. Um, yeah, it was budget season, if I remember correctly. Um, yes, other questions? Yeah, Councilor Gibson. If you do that, are you bringing back goodies? Oh, always. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. I'll bring plenty of asbestos back, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're known for, is asbestos. That's the, uh, the mines. <laughs> No, I will bring goodies, don't worry. Whatever uh, the border will allow me to carry across. Then I'm in favor. Okay. <laughs> uh, other questions on mayor and council's elected leadership pages? All right, seeing none, let's get the show on the road. Next, civic promotion, C5, C6. Questions, concerns? Okay, seeing none. What's going on? Community support, we just did. Everyone good on that? Okay, moving to s now city management, C9 and C10. City manager section. Anybody, anybody? Okay, we're gonna keep going. Again, tell me if I'm going too fast now. On to C11, C12, I am, I'm good? No, I'm going too fast. No, okay, good, good. Uh, C11, C12, questions, comments? This is now administration under the city management section. Okay, you all look like you're reading, but I'm not seeing any hands, so we're moving on. Finance and administration section, we've got C13, C14, which is uh, finance department section. All right. 
onward. 15, C15, C16 is city clerk section. Yes, go for it. Council Pretty Cotton Zero. Uh, for elections and election workers, stipends, et cetera, is that under city clerk or is that under? I believe the there's department? a separate election section. Yeah. Gotcha. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. But any on city clerk section before we jump to elections, and then I'll throw it back to Councilor Parity Canzero. Okay. Elections, which is C17, C18. Councilor Parity Canzero, you have the floor. Um, yeah, just a thought. Um, I know in the past it's been difficult to get election workers um, to come in. Um, so I am not thinking of anything specific, but just sort of throwing it out there that there might be something in the way of either talking about how much we pay the election workers or providing any other sort of incentives there. Um, I think in the past we have talked about um, splitting up election workers into different shifts so people don't feel like it's as long of a day, but then it's hard if you don't have enough period. So if that's just um, something I'm thinking about is potentially um, increasing that election worker pay. Appreciate it. Yeah, there was a point, maybe it was COVID 2020 or so, that election we did increase their daily stipend, if I remember correctly. I don't remember from what to what, but I know we have recently, but it has probably been four years or so. Yeah. Um, other something specific, but just yeah, a thought. No, great idea. Other questions, comments, ideas? Okay, seeing none. Next is tax collector section, still under finance and administration. This is C19 and C20. These are good. Onward. C21, C22 is human services. Yes, Councillor Witham. Yeah, I think that uh, I'll be looking at account number 45. 494, which is homeless and shelter support that's budgeted at $10,000. Uh, it wouldn't be adequate to meet the needs that we had this past winter. So I, I think I'm going to be looking to up that number, particularly given the uncertainty as we deal with this issue. Uh, and as I spoke about under community support, we had Crossroads House. So uh, maybe that becomes handled through this line item and some resolution type of format. Uh, I'm not sure what this number should be, but 10,000 seems inadequate. Uh, I think it's somewhere between 10,000 and 50,000, quite frankly, uh, but I'd be interested in what the pulse of council is there. But I, I just flagged that as a line item that I think we need to put some effort behind. Great, thank you. Other thoughts, ideas, questions? Council Matthew? Just for clarification, are you saying that you want to reappropriate this money to the to the line item to raise for Crossroads House? No, uh, my proposal would probably be to eliminate the Crossroads House request out of community support and then fund it through this line through a separate resolution. Uh, I'm not married to that idea, but regardless, this this line needs to go up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts, questions, ideas? All right, I'm not seeing any. We're going to keep going. All right, next is the library section, which is four pages, I believe. C23, 24, 25, and 26. I have one question there. Yes, Councilor Pepin. Yeah, it would be under uh, 41, 100. Uh, it's basically health and dental. I mean, we were for 34,000 last year's budget and we dropped down to 17. Is there any special reason? Just um, change in staff and change in choice of what they're doing with their health insurance. Change of hand, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the point there is, you know, if you have a single person versus a married versus a family plan, that can vary that tremendously. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, well, in some instances also, the city does offer a $5,000 buyout. So if uh, an employee has coverage through their spouse or significant other somewhere else that's sufficient, then they can elect to take the buyout instead of the health coverage. Yes, Councilor Gibson. Quick question. I should know this, but when you do the buyout, does, is that on done year to year? 
Yeah, so it's a weekly stipend, but it, it, it equals 5000 a year. Okay. Thank you. Questions, comments, ideas? Yes, Councilor Goodwin. This is just a, a general question. <clears throat> uh, I'm assuming all of the salaries stated here are like the burdened. Are they net? Is it net because we have the line detail on the on the benefits? The the salaries the salaries are their gross salaries. Gross, yeah, obviously before taxes, but Correct. no, none, no other benefits included. In no, there. yeah, just right. the benefits that they do get are listed separately. Right. Okay. Great. All right. Other ideas, questions, thoughts? Okay. Moving on. Next, C twenty seven and C twenty eight is the assessing section. then we now jump to developmental services first up is planning which is c29 and c30 that's on planning okay next is c31 c32 economic development I have a question. Yes, go for it. I'm sorry, I, I, I couldn't jump fast enough. You're good. Um, the new program that planning's buying, I, is that that fee, that yearly fee in there? I didn't see it anywhere. No, that's being paid for through that resolution, and right. then that yearly fee, you'll see it in the FY26 budget. Thank you very much. Question. Yes, again, sorry if I'm going too fast, everybody. Um, all right, still on economic development, or if you did have any on planning, feel free to throw it out. Yes, Councilor Goodwin. Uh, just a follow-up question that was mentioned earlier. So the prior position that was in economic development would have landed here, but has now been subsumed by development services? Because this seems just generally very light, but, but much of the scope that would have lived here under that role now lives with development services. Well, it's all development services, Councilor. The uh, Lands in the planning office. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Correct. Thank you. Thoughts? Questions? Okay. Code enforcement, C33 and 34. Right. And then go to recreation, which is four pages. C35, 36, 37, 38. And yep. Okay. All right. Next is City Hall, which is 39 and 40. any for that brings us to public safety everyone's good all right first up in public safety is police admin which I believe is four pages it's from C41 to C44 nope it's more than that I apologize to C45 any questions about police admin yes Councilor Perry count zero um, I'm not sure where this would be under this, um, and maybe um, the chief would be able to answer, but um, I know we've, we've been talking for a while about trying to get some creative funding sources for the ACERT program, um, and I'm just wondering if there is a spot in the budget currently that that could be funded by, should we choose to fund that with city funds? Yeah, I would defer to city manager or chief Mackland, whoever is best suited to answer that. I think um, chief Macklin, if you could come up, I think we talked to the public safety committee meeting about what funding sources are currently available, uh, any update you can provide or any need for any gap funding. Should we lose uh, what we're able to do now with outside support? Yeah, so currently the um, process is with through our, through our COSA grant um, trying to 
access for funds through Amistag Health through that grant. Um, that grant currently was extended, um, <coughs> excuse me, through this September 30th for the federal grant cycle. The state is reapplying um, which for that grant, which they'll have a, a determination and notice as we get closer to September 30th. So if that grant does, um, it is extended, technically we're in an extension right now, and I think there's eight communities involved. And the reason for extension is simply staffing. Nobody can commit uh, uh, personnel to that particular grant. Um, but if the grant is claimed again by the state, if they're successful in obtaining that grant, there'll be more momentum for the ACER program. Um, and I think with the Public Safety Committee, the concern was if we try to move forward with temporary funding on somebody now and all of a sudden September 30th, everything disappears, it would not be a very conducive to a professional program. So uh, I'm trying to get more guidance. I, I meet with our unofficial ACERT group, which consists of about nine to 10 people. Um, we're due for a meeting later this month via Zoom. So. Um, I certainly would be interested to see, um, for exactly that reason, um, what it would look like for us to put it into the budget so that it wouldn't be something that we were just relying on year to year. It would be something that at least we are aware of the possibility of it in the budget and maybe that can be supplemented or helped out by grants year to year. Um, but if so, um, I, I would be interested in looking at just where that would be in the budget and talking about adding that in. Yes, and I agree. And part of the conversation is on the new grant is how are they going to word sustainability in when the funding runs out? What does that look like for the municipality for inheriting any costs? So it's yet to be determined. Okay. We're going to do uh, Cameron, then with them. Mr. Cameron. Hi, Chief. Hi. Um, I know that we had talked about at some point in time the longevity of a canine. It's usually around five years. I'm one, and I'm not exactly sure where Bravo is in the middle of this. Are there any um, contingencies or plans in place if he needs to be replaced, or how does that work? Yeah, abs absolutely. I recently had a conversation with the city manager updating him on our program. So Bravo, um, he is right around seven years old, coming up next month. And speaking with the canine handler, looking at national standards, um, it's a year to two years of sustainable uh, service left. I hope the life of the dog is much more than that, but you know, maybe an average of 18 months. A contingency plan is similar to how the purchase was uh, funded originally through our drug forfeiture. That's an opportunity, and I've made note of any balance or any projected cases that might produce some revenue for that to uh, identify it for sustainability of the canine program. And a new dog will cost anywhere from 3500 to 5000 just for the dog itself, and then you have additional training. But, you know, I, I think as in the CIP program, you know, with the purchase of new stock, one of our new cruises is updated canine equipment. So I think that sends a pretty powerful message that it's a program worth saving. So. Councillor Woodman, and then Gibson. Thank you. Uh, the question about a certain grants, it, it just raises the question whether it's that grant or, or any others. Um, I love the use of grants for one-time purchases, one-time things, but when you have successful programs, funding them with grants is tenuous at best because they run out, there's complexities, there's red tape, there's strings, there's all of that. So I think whenever we approach programs with grants, we need to view those as opening the door, but ultimately we need to inherit those programs in, in full. Um, case in point with SYC, which we discussed earlier, uh, we have used uh, grant opportunities to acquire patrol staff and police. We've used a grant opportunity to increase staffing at the fire department. And the way those grants work is that 
you get year one free, year two at partial cost, year three, you're almost paying the full boat, and usually year four, it's all yours. So they sort of tiptoe you in, and I think that's how you have to look at grants with, with programming. So just throw that out there. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Just a side question. Um, what happens with uh, canines uh, at retirement? Um, it's it's common industry wide for the canine to become part of the handler's family in a private uh, non uh, non work related capacity. So there is a plan in place. Yes, it's a discussion with the with the um, canine officer who's absolutely interested in that. So. Great, thank you. Yep. Other thoughts on police admin section? All right, let's jump to patrol section, which goes from C46 to C48. You want me to stay up here, Mayor? Or yeah, if you don't mind, at least through your sections, and then we'll move on. We'll Let me grab my book. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <coughs> Any thoughts, questions, concerns, patrol? None. We'll go to investigations, which goes from C49 to C50. None. We'll do police support, which is C51, 52, and 53. Next is traffic, which is C54 and 55. Yes, Councillor Witham. Yeah, just as a reminder, I, I did ask for how much revenue we generate annually with parking tickets. I, I would like to compare that with the part-time salary. So I don't know if we have that number. Yeah, City Manager. Yeah, I wasn't sure you had it right. I have it right in front of me. I uh, have it in front of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> FY24 by it's the Chief to... Uh, dug this down and he did um, FY24 budget 19,533 FY25 budget 21,467 that's through that calendar or f it was fiscal year right the uh, as far as the revenue so far but I think I gave you the total revenue for the prior year and up to date. I can't remember the date. It was maybe towards the 1st of March. Yeah, the wrong if I... Does that show on our revenues? Income from departments. Income from it's income from it, departments, right? Yeah, it's under income. I'm sorry. I, I thought you meant in the general fund. It's summarized in what you have before you. It's in income from departments. Which, which would, con I'm sorry, Your Honor, which would contain uh, building permit fees and other miscellaneous fees and revenues, rather. Other thoughts, questions? Parity Canzaro, then Vincent. Um, I do see that that number went up, and I don't know if that is us planning on doing more for parking enforcement, or is is that, uh, I guess what I'm hoping is that we increase our parking enforcement downtown, because we have continuously heard that that is a problem, um, and I don't know if that's built in here already, and if so, um, how much? Um. I think part of it was uh, staffing changes. So we were there was a lag there for hiring. One, we lost one person and had a lag. So it was a, a variable issues. But I'll let the chief speak to how much uh, ep, how much uh, extra effort we can apply. Yes, I mean we Bob's right. We had some staffing changes with a couple of people that uh, didn't quite work out. Uh, we've been pretty consistent with our current. Uh, he's a retired um, military retired postal worker who. Although his hours aren't 
entirely flexible. He's consistent. Does does his job, and I mean that that number of um, department income is basically what we can. Just because you write a ticket doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be collected, and um, the courts make it very clear to us about what they want in the court and what they do not want in the court, and that is uh, <laughs> sometimes that is a direct result of the final number we co we collect. So, but, um, you know, I know there's been talk in the past about maybe adding another part-time. That's certainly not reflected in this budget. Okay. So this current budget as passed wouldn't get us more enforcement than what we have now? No. Okay. Councilor Ritson. Yeah, I'm going to pass. Other thoughts, questions, concerns, ideas? Okay. We're going to go to prosecution. To C fifty six and fifty seven. Thoughts, questions. Seeing none. That goes to fire administration. Thank you, Chief Macklin. Appreciate it. Those are your sections. <laughs> um, all right, fire administration is our next one. It's C58 to 59 and 60. Questions on that? Yes, Councilor Vincent. Health and dental surely took a little jump. From twenty four thousand five to to fifty seven nine. Any ideas why? Is Heard it just a cost of doing business, like my buddy would say? Yeah. yeah again, a couple of reasons: um, employee turnover. So we anticipated a change, and this funds um, last year's budget had the deputy chief for half a year or whatever <coughs> it was. This funds a twelve month deputy chief, so it's just based on those anticipations. Oh, correct, for, for coming up. Yeah. Um, and then another question, if I may. Mm -hmm. So um, the full-time, um, so obviously when a chief is there for three years, I mean, his salary, I don't know what the difference is in salary, but there's a new chief coming in. It's probably just minuscule, right? And what happens is they just take that money and just put it in the, in the rest of their budget. Is that what happens, Bob? Yeah, well, we're uncertain uh, when we'll hire the deputy chief and w at what value to. Uh, right. That'll be what salary that'll be. Right. And whether it's a single or family plan and those sorts of things, they're all variable. Thank you. And um, certainly uh, overtime has always been a struggle uh, with, with just 16 firefighters. Right. Thank you. Other questions, concerns, fire administration? Okay. Firefighting is... C61, 62, 63, and 64. Questions on that? Yes, Councilor Gibson. Um, just, just backing up, um, will the electricity go down once the... Um, Co-op or the, um, the solar, solar farm. Questions for city manager or finance director? No. Okay. Thank you. No. No. Other questions? Firefighting. Okay. All right. That gets us to public works. Do folks need a break? How are we doing? We good. Okay. I need to go to the bathroom, if you don't mind. Thank you. <laughs> that was a right. really a selfish question for me. <laughs> I know, really. All right, I'll de defer to Deputy uh, We are at C65 through 68, which is Public <laughs> Works and Utilities Administration. Any questions there?
Good news, Director Babinski, no questions. <laughs> Moves us on to C69 and 70 street maintenance. Manager Belmore. I just point out that um, the obvious, just for clarity, um, the sidewalk uh, uh, project funding to continue our efforts in sidewalk reconstruction and repairs. Um, because of uh, trying to meet the tax cap, we should have been looking at 120 there, but I had it ratcheted back to 100. Same with road resurfacing. Actually, CIP is looking at a little over a million. Uh, but I was at least hopeful to keep that at 900000 So I had to um, peel that back to 750000 just to flag those for the counselors. And um, we have been, I, I will add that in rural resurfacing, we have been very, uh, uh, for lack of something better, lucky in our bid structure lately. And we've been able to carry over money from year to year, some leftover capital funding to help us out as we move forward th through our road resurfacing programs. But I thought it was important to to make sure everybody was on the same page on those particular issues. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Deputy. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Council Gibson. Um, vehicle fuel cost cut in half, uh, 44,400. Uh, yep, I see you. Yep. Director Babinski or Scott, and if someone want to help with this. Well, the, the, the budget, we just, it was overspent but the budget was 35 last year and the proposal is 35 this year so it's level funded okay thank you in that level funding i assume it's like we might do for salt and things of that nature where you look at like a rolling average of cost and adjust accordingly is that accurate yeah we usually use either three to five years we look historically at what we've spent and then just uh, flip a coin on how the winter might be. And certainly we look at the uh, whether we're buying from Irving, so we'll flip flop from Irving to the state. Uh, now the state's moving their barn down to, uh, if you could speak to that issue, that issue as far as Newington, we'll have to watch that closely as far as rate structure on uh, cost per gallon. Microphone, Mike. For the for the most part, we're using the state facility, but occasionally, we will use Irving Gas. Uh, when the state transfers their operations to Newington, their new deep their public works facility, we'll, we will definitely need to look at that with regard to um, how we uh, access fuel. More than likely, we'll stay with Irving for uh, convenience, but um, something for us to consider. We do have a program set up with the state still. So. Thank you. It looks like you guys didn't pass it while I was gone, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, think, um, I think they did. No. All right. Thank you. C69, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> much appreciated. Councilor Goodwin, I believe you're next, and then Vincent. It was just a clarification question for the city manager. So um, the sidewalk project and road resurfacing budgets, essentially you're just flagging that those are below what we would ideally like them to be, and if the council has the appetite to increase the budget, you gave us some targets that you thought were appropriate. Correct, Councillor. Councillor Vincent. So, in years past, I remember um, the state's fuel wasn't cheapest. So, you've been playing that game back and forth, which is smart. We have. It's good business. We have. It's um, good business. I think a couple years ago, Scott, they, they got out of a past contract that was not that advantageous to us. And uh, their uh, the process now is they use rack prices and more direct marketing, you know, what's happening at the at the, uh, the deliveries, and so that number came down, more com more competitive. We don't pay taxes as well, so that also. And I was wondering, just I, I, when I worked for the fire department, I, I always was the guy that wanted to try to get the best price for everything. I know it's hard to believe here, wow. like, you know what I mean? And I, and I did. I, did, I got a lot of money saved. Remember we did paper towels. We were paying for one bundle $12 somewhere, and then went to Portsmouth Paper Company. It was 2 bucks. so I saved. So my, my, my question is, maybe we should call up Irving sometime and say, hey, We'd like to bring all our vehicles to you. Can you cut us ten cents a gallon or something? Does any of that does that ever work? Um, it it can, and something again as as we 
observe and deal with the relocation of the DP or the state barn, those are those are some questions that we'll look right. at. We'll certainly we, look I at mean, you can try it. You don't even you, know, you don't even need to say it was my idea. Thank you. <laughs> Others for street maintenance, Councilor Perdy Catanzaro. Yeah, um, my recollection, and this is several years old, is that um, nine hundred thousand, as the city manager said, he would ideally have liked to have put in that line. Um, is just kind of what we need to maintain status quo. So $750,000 means essentially our road uh, pavement level will be going down in the next year unless we add to this line item. Um, roads and sidewalks, I think, are one of the number one things that we hear about here on council. It's one of the things that affects people all the time. So I certainly uh, will be looking to increase that number. Um, I imagine also that 900000 no longer gets us even status quo because all of those prices have gone up. So even if we increase that to 900000 we're probably still just going to be trying to maintain uh, the overall condition of our roads. So just flagging that. Gibson and then Benjamin. Yeah, I apologize for going backwards, but the conversation about who we use for gasoline for public works reminded me of this. Do we also use Cumberland Farms? Uh, we don't. We have a we have an arrangement with Urban okay. Gas and, um, and and it's it's citywide, so it's not just public works, but other. Well, I was wondering because I saw a police cruiser pulled up to the pumps at Cumberland the other night. I didn't know if that was. I don't know if it was an emergency or a unique situation. The chief might be able to speak to that. Would you like an answer from the chief? Yeah, yeah I mean, if it was just like a one-off, okay, no Back problem. I was just curious why. That was a particular expectation of meeting a person who was showing up and conducting business with them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just don't like Cumberland Farms. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Except their coffee. Fucking his coffee. <laughs> All right. Uh, Councillor Vincent. Yeah, yeah I, just a comment on the, 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 uh, the roads. I just want to say that being on that committee for six years, our roads, I feel that our roads are really up there now. They're really top quality. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, there's a couple of choice roads that still need to be repaired. I get it. We're always going to put money into roads. But I think it's more focusing in my, just, just this council's opinion, that sidewalks definitely need to have some help. But, um, you know, I actually looked at roads um, for a cut because of um, how well they were. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Yeah, Councillor Cameron and then Gibson. Thank you. Um, if I recall when Councilor Sprague was on here with us that bringing the road resurfacing up to one million was probably a good starting point to keep us where we need to be and keep us moving forward. So I will probably be looking to add that back to the one million to at least keep us where we need to be. Thank you. Councilor Gibson. Yeah. First off, I want to commend uh, the Public Works Department as well as any first responders for how well we survived the bad weather conditions. Thank you, um, the, um, the driving Uber has been a very interesting experience for me, driving in our wealthier companion communities. Um, Portsmouth streets are horrible. And some of Dover's streets are, are beyond horrible. So you guys, as well as the council, are doing a great job keeping us ahead of the curve on that stuff. I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Councillor Withers. Yeah, two quick points. I am certainly open to the conversation about uh, increasing those two lines. Uh, I would say in particular the sidewalk line. Uh, I'll remind council that we're looking to close engineering and go out to bid on that section of sidewalk from West High to South Street. It's not a very long section, and we're looking at, you know, probably knocking on the door to a million bucks for that short section of sidewalk. So 
money doesn't go far with these projects. And in fact, uh, to the point I think that Council of Parity Captain Zero made, it goes less far these days than it once did. So the million dollars that we were talking about back in the days with Councilor Sprague is not a million dollars worth of work anymore. It, well, it's still a million dollars worth of work, but the amount of work is less, right? So um, just to be mindful of that. Uh, I agree with Councilor Vincent uh, that we have made some tremendous headway uh, in this category, uh, but you don't want to fall behind either. And, you know, we're, we're coming to the point probably within the next, I don't know, I would guess five years where the main corridor of High Street from Dover to at least the drugstores probably needs to be done. Uh, that's going to be probably a bonded project, I would guess, because we're probably talking three, four million just to do that stretch of roadway with reclaim. So careful about dialing back because it's hard to dial back up. We see the struggles we had with dialing back up. Uh, after we ratchet back. So just need to be mindful of that. Thank you. Other thoughts, questions, comments? Okay, great. We're going to go to snow removal section, 70, C71, C72. You're all intimately aware of snow removal after this past week. <laughs> yes, Councilor Rhythm. Yeah, just, uh, you know, I, I want to comment. Um, there's been some uh, discussion on social media about uh, is there any savings to be had with salt. Um, I know Public Works has been very mindful of their approach with salt application. Uh, and I think particularly this year, if you look at their, their use of salt, um, the department has focused a lot more on what I'll call mechanical removal, plowing, right? So even when you have only an inch or an inch and a half of snow, They'll scrape that off because they can use far less salt after you scrape it off. Back in the day, up to three inches, we used to try to salt the living daylights out of it. We would try to melt the snow. The truck's already driving down the road. Drop the blade and move it off. You don't have to use as much salt. Uh, it's much better for the environment. We've also uh, moved away from sand use predominantly. Uh, sand is terrible for the environment, much worse than salt and uh, sand creates indoor air quality issues and all of that. So Public Works has been very mindful of their approach and we've dialed that in. The equipment we now have, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Director, is now calibrated so it doesn't, yeah, there's the occasional spill when they turn a corner or whatever, but uh, the application rates are calibrated and go with the vehicle speed. It's a much more careful approach uh, to the use of that material. Right. And, and just a quick point on that, we're, we've also added uh, brine. We, uh, last couple of years, we've started using that selectively, but based on conditions as a pre-treat. Absolutely. Questions, thoughts? Great. Going to street lighting, section C7374. Yes, Councilor Pepin. Yes, thank you. Um, 45433. Uh, traffic lights, I know it's gone up $5,000 on that, and I know it says contracted items. I, I, I guess I'm scratching my head. I think we updated all the traffic signals electronically and stuff like that. Um, is there any reasoning why it's gone up outside contracting? I'd be glad to answer that, that question, Councilor. The, um, what we've projected for FY25 is an, uh, a, a service contract with Sebago Technics, which is our um, traffic design engineer. And they will be helping uh, monitor and continue to adjust as needed the traffic signal along the corridor, or along the high street corridor. This year, um, as part of their, our contract with them, there's no, that was part of their, con their that is part of their contract to um, re recalibrate, synchronize, monitor, but going into the future, it's a I think it's a ten or ten thousand uh, dollar contract that we have that we're projecting. So that's why that adjustment's in there. In addition to any other repairs, we still uh, will have occasionally some repairs with uh, signals and so forth. So that's what that's for. Yeah, I just I just thought it would go down a little. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll take the converse. I thought it yeah. was going to go up a lot more because it's much more technology than and there's cameras and uh, all of that that we didn't have before. So that all needs more maintenance, not less. 
Okay. Other thoughts, questions, sweet lady? Okay. Next is C7576, which is equipment maintenance. Questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, let's go to C77 and 78, which is our city engineer. Questions? <coughs> All right, onwards. Next is C79, C80, <coughs> and 81, buildings and grounds. <coughs> Going on to C82 and 83, cemetery. Okay. Next is C84 and 85, solid waste collection. Or excuse me, yeah, solid waste collection. Sorry about that one. One question. Yes, Councilor Vincent. Thank you. So, um, uh, and, and it's a question that is. Uh, can we quickly, exp uh, yeah. I guess, explain? So if in the cemetery, right, I didn't see no line item for revenue because that's all in the revenue side, correct? So, it, but the revenue side doesn't bring down, so let's just say cemetery and we get a plot that we sell for 500 bucks, well, I don't know what it is, it doesn't matter. How does that revenue reflect on the budget, meaning... It's not here in the revenue section because, okay, if they sold eight lots, it's it's in the front section. Is that what that is that what's going on? Yeah, it's like all other revenues. Yeah, so, so all your revenues are on your revenue side of your budget. Right, and obviously, um, um, this is over and above what it is. Obviously, yes, it is. Yeah. I had another question, but I forgot what it was. Yes, Councilor Goodwin and then Matt Sierra. Just a really quick comment on the maintenance. Um, I'm assuming the historic metal picket fence is part of city property as well. And, um, I mean, it's in decent shape, but it will eventually in a couple of years need repainting and possibly resetting uh, as things have settled. Uh, I'm just curious if uh, that is on your radar. It definitely is, Councilor. Um, we've actually looked at and we're projecting the possibility of getting some historic grants, historical grants from the state to either restore, replace some segments. A few years back, we did get what's called a moose plate grant from the state to replace your front gates by the archway, by the, in front of the chapel. Um, and that, that's almost, it's not quite a mile, but it's almost a mile of fence. So it, when we did go out for quote a few years back just to have it repainted and sandblasted and repainted it was a very large number so we we passed but we are looking at funding we also are looking at funds uh, grant funds rather for the ferber chapel phase two you may recall we did uh, the roof the slate roof uh, a few years back uh, there's other series of um, both internal painting and then masonry work on the external uh, that has has to be addressed so that's something on our radar screen i think pre-apps or pre-applications are due in may so we plan to submit that. Council Mess here. Yeah, uh, back to the maintenance and that fence. Yeah. It needs to be painted soon. It, it is pretty rusted. I drive by that numerous times a day. Yeah. Don't walk by it, but I drive by. Uh, so I'm happy to hear it's on the radar. Um, if we get a grant from the place, we vote on that, right? Uh, yeah, the grant would come before you, if that's your question, okay. Councilor. Well, I, okay. if we get a grant, we need to do it quickly because it needs yeah. Councilor Gibson? Um, under um, solid waste collection, uh, I see Winter Street and Maple Street um, is the old landfill under a separate category for the monitoring wells? Uh, it is, it is the, um, the Winter Street uh, monitoring and Maple Street, uh, uh, they're definitely related to the, uh, the Brownfields cleanup that we did. And I think their Maple Street is uh, the, um, 
the fire station. Oh, the fire station, that's right. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the old landfill is a separate fund. So when you get into other expenses, you'll see a line item for transfers where that money gets transferred along with what GE gives us. It creates a separate fund that we use to do that. Thank you. And a follow up to that. So those that so I can obviously see Maple Street monitoring wells will never end. But how about the Winter Street? Is it is there certain time frames on that? No, I think that would be it's this not? probably forever in a day too. Okay, thank you. Other questions on public work? Okay, moving to other expenses. We've got. Transfers to debt services, 8687. Yes, Councilor Rhythm. Yeah, I guess this is another area. You know, I rattled off a few things for a one time purchase to remove from the budget. Uh, as I look down through this listing, the, the high street principal and paving, it's the final year. Could we just pay those with fund balance and not have them in the budget? Well, I don't know why you would do that. Um, besides the fact that the, what, what, the way we've lined it up is we're bonding the Constitutional Way project, and oh, we're timing yeah, yeah. that such that when we begin to pay on that, this one falls off. So there'll be a little impact, but it'll be minimal. Got it. I'm following that. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, capital leases is 88 to 89. Questions on that? Okay. All right, next is transfer to other capital funds, 90, 91. Looks like those two pages. Okay. Whoa. Sorry, I, I just saw the the number yeah. for the Superfund monitoring. Yes, big number. Ninety, hundred and twenty-two thousand. All right, contingency is next. C ninety-two and ninety-three. Okay, gives us to or brings us to capital outlay. Which is ninety four and ninety five. Right? Good. County with oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Messier. Apologies. Just for my own uh, education, I see master plan again, another twenty five. Is the cost fifty grand or is it is it am I gonna see that? how much is the master plan gonna cost? Manager. Um, Michelle might be able to help me out on this, but uh, we had hoped to put in uh, approximately $90,000, but I had to ratchet this back uh, again uh, because of the obvious tax cap uh, implications. So in instead of 90 this year, um, we're thinking uh, 25 to 35 uh, moving forward for four consecutive years to take care of that. Uh, we did secure a couple of grants that Michelle can speak to that's being undergone now for, in regards to master plan chapters. So um, maybe you could help me out, Michelle, a little bit on your thought process in regards to attacking uh, needed upgrades, uh, updates to the master plan. Yeah, so originally it was $90,000 in the capital improvements, but as the city manager said, it's now $100,000 or $25,000 over four years, which is a total of $100,000. We did receive an uh, uh, Invest New Hampshire grant for the amount of $25,000 to uh, complete the housing chapter. And we have also received uh, a PREPA grant, which is uh, Piscataqua Regional Estuaries Program for $25,000 for the Natural Resources Chapter. And there's a couple other funding opportunities that we hope to apply for in the future. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. Thank you. All right. County and school, we have no say over as far as I understand. Uh, educational expenses, 
is on C97. Again, that would be come when we get to the school section, I believe, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. We'll get to that later. C98 is against school department services. We'll get to that when we get to the school section of the budget. Brings us to enterprise funds, which is C99 uh, is our uh, wastewater and water solid waste fund. It's kind of an outline on that page. That's the enterprise fund estimate. And then we've got sections for each of these. Um, we can just kind of let's start with the wastewater fund, which goes from C100 to C103. Questions on that? Yes, Councilor Wyndham. No question. I'm just stating the obvious for for people at home. Um, uh, through council action, we just uh, did some rate setting for both water and wastewater enterprise funds. These have no impact on tax rate. Um, uh, the, the budgets are supported by those enterprise funds, supported by uh, the rates that we pay for water and sewer. Thank you. Other thoughts, comments, discussion on the wastewater section? Okay. Well, yes, go ahead, Councillor uh, Gibson. I just have to say this. Yes, it has no impact on the tax rate. Just like the paper bag doesn't have an impact on the tax rate, just like um, any of these other separate funds. Problem is, it impacts my wallet. And I'm sure that a lot of other people don't like that feeling either. All right, thank you. Yes, Councilor Witham. Yeah, certainly not to enter into debate, but one of the things that is good about an enterprise fund or a paper bag program, you pay for what you use, right? So uh, that's the, the, the value of taking it out of the tax rate and putting it into these types of funds is that it makes people a little more accountable for how much water they use or how much trash they generate. Thank you. All right. Next section. It looks like that first page actually went to page 106. I apologize. Um, our next section is the water department within our enterprise funds, which goes from 107 to. Come on. Go all the way to the end. One. Yeah, 15. Thank you. Questions on that water department enterprise funds section? see any uh, next is solid waste disposal 116 and 117 questions on that yes council rhythm yeah I just want to plant a seed um, it was a recent newspaper article about Rochester preparing for the eventual closing of turnkey landfill maybe in about a decade or so um, certainly much greater impact to the city of Rochester than to us because of all of the, the benefits they get. But certainly if turnkey, when the day comes that turnkey is at capacity and closes, our trash is going to have to go somewhere else and that somewhere else is a lot further away than Rochester, New Hampshire. So that's going to be a tremendous cost impact on our solid waste uh, tipping fee. Um, I just think we need to be mindful of that and at some point in the future having a conversation around that is important. Uh, we do have a fee that we attach to our paper bag. I think it's 10 cents right now to pay for some of these uncertainties. Uh, it goes into a dedicated solid waste fund for lack of a better way to describe it. And uh, is that not something that we look to tweak in the future? I don't know, but it's a thought that occurs to me to look towards the future. Great. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Goodwin. Just a, a newbie question here. I, I see that on the solid waste disposal <clears throat> page, there's a, a proposed 110,000 for bags. Is this the blue bag program? It's, I mean, does the city subsidize essentially solid waste? I'm just I'm curious what that it covers. Uh, yeah, purchasing of bags uh, for residents. So we need to have bags to sell 
even though they are paid for by... Oh, we are the distributor, so this is the cost for us to buy right? them, and then we sell them and get reimbursed? Co well, correct. This okay. is our cost to buy them and have them distributed to, to the places where people buy them. Got it. But we get reimbursed with profit that then goes into the enterprise fund. That's factored into the actual cost Got of it. the bag that goes to the yep. customer, correct. Other questions or comments, concerns? Yeah, go ahead, you know, I, I, the whole budget process and finance is pretty wild. Even though you, I've been here for a while, I still don't know it. <laughs> I try to call you and get the information, you know, and, and I do get educated. And so I understand the questions that councils have. But, you know, you, you see this $10,500. If it's getting paid back and it's a wash, why is it here? That's my question. I, I get it. I know what the answer is. I'm just saying we see this ten thousand five hundred dollars, and we say, "Wait a minute, it's just coming on the other end." <laughs> because you're, you're required to gross appropriate what they talk right, about. So right, right. You have to show your all your expenditures. That's why you're the finance director, and I'm nobody. <laughs> uh, yes, Councillor Messier. I see forty forty nine six zero eight composting. Do we have a compost? I mean, compost bin at Public Works. Operated by uh, Mr. Fox. Yeah. Yes. We have a, um, I think it's a 65 gallon container at DPW. It's in fact, oh. it's in the front of the parking lot off to the side by the uh, waste oil. And we have people avail themselves uh, quite a bit, actually. We service it once a week. Okay. I never knew that. No. So. I think we started at maybe two Public years service ago. Amount, two, yeah. two, yeah, maybe three, yeah. <laughs> All right, other questions on this section or comments? All right, great. Go to Cable Fund. This is our last one, you guys. We're doing great. This is everyone's favorite fund. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? I, I have a quick question first for the city manager. Why do you put the Cable Fund last when this is going to be the most hotly <laughs> debated section? I just everybody's kid, I kid, tired I kid, by I then. <laughs> I know, I tried. No, no, no. All right, um, we're getting there. Councilor Gibson, you're up. Go for it. Okay. Um, does not directly affect the fund itself, but um, I would like to see the language pertaining to the cable fund addressed in future council meeting so that the original intent was to be dedicated to maintaining and enhancing our cable capabilities and not as a general purpose piggy bank. Other questions, comments, concerns? I don't see any. All right. That's it. That brings us. Yeah, it was. It gets us to schools. Schools. Hold on. Before we go anywhere. Schools, I would ask that we begin discussions on at our next council meeting. I will, of course, need to step aside, and I will ask Deputy Mayor uh, Dave Witham to step in. Um, the reason I asked schools to go first is that schools are currently um, coming to the end of their year. They're looking to set plans for hiring for next year. This is peak hiring season, season for paraeducators, administrators, and teachers throughout the state. If we do not provide them an idea as to what they will have for funds, it will make that process all the more difficult. And the longer we delay, the harder it will be for them. Um, so I ask we tackle that first. Uh, Again, I am setting no precedent as to whether you do it dis officially decided at the next meeting, but I ask that you begin discussions at the next meeting, um, and I will step aside after that. If you would like to start on the city section, you may. We have a special budget workshop scheduled for April. Let me look for the date. I can't remember off the top of my head. Special budget workshop for the 22nd of April, where we will continue this process if need be. If we finish it before then, great. If we don't, we'll meet then. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. Questions, comments before we close One, one final comment yes, just to please, that point. Absolutely. Um, no objection to kind of handling the school portion first. Uh, however, uh, and, and that would give them sort of some uh, guidance, I guess that's the good word, right? Mm -hmm. Because 
it's not final till it's final, until sure. we have a final vote. Because the, the, we don't vote on the school budget and then vote on the, it's we true. vote on the budget. So what we'll handle is amendments, yes. uh, but Great I hear your order and I don't disagree with it. Yeah, I think that, no, that is a really important clarification, is that they will not have a final actual number until we officially vote and ratify the budget in its entirety, but it may give some clarity to them where they start looking, maybe drafting things with what they've got. All right. My, my other comment yeah. is that, you know, the, the budget, although it's it's large and can seem daunting, I think as we went through this morning here, there's maybe a couple handfuls of areas that we sort of all kind of gravitated to. Those are going to be the discussion points, I suspect. Um, you know, it's not every single page. It's a nugget here and a nugget there, and I think this process here this morning, although long, I think streamlines our next couple of meetings, probably. I agree. I really appreciate the work that everyone did today. It was a lot. It was a long morning, but really impressive. Thank you all. If there's, yes, Councilor Cardi Um Yeah, just wanted to clarify. So the next meeting is April 15th, which is not this coming Monday, correct? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yep. I, I heard April. Monday a couple times. I was like, is my yeah. calendar wrong? April 15th, um, their next And one. just, you know, for everybody watching, we're still fully available to take questions, comments. Um, some people have reached out already about the budget, um, but even though the public hearing has already opened and closed at the last meeting, people are always welcome to come in and share their comments right ahead of um, all the debate and discussion that we'll be having at the next meeting and however many after that. So just want to encourage folks to come out um, on April 15th if they have any concerns or comments to anything that we've talked about here today. Absolutely. Final thoughts, questions, concerns? All right, thank you everybody. We are in adjournment until the call of the chair for the next meeting. Thank you.